I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the November 2nd Fitchburg Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission has seven members. Members are citizens residing in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. The Commission is appointed by the City Council and serves on a volunteer basis. The Commission collaborates with the residents, businesses, and organizations to facilitate compliance with the eight interests of the Wetlands Protection Act and the Fitchburg Wetlands Bylaw. Meetings of this Commission are subject to and abide by the open meeting law. If you would like more information about any of these regulations, feel free to ask a Commissioner, agent, or the environmental consultant. Thank you for your commitment to the conservation of our natural resources. And thank you for your patience as we navigate this hybrid meeting. The Commission requests that folks wishing to speak approach the podium and speak clearly into the microphone. And remote attendees maintain microphones on mute for privacy. If you would like to speak, use the chat function or raise your hand to alert the chair of your intention. Be advised this public meeting is being live streamed and recorded by Fitchburg Access Television. If a member of the in-person audience is recording this meeting, this is your opportunity to identify yourself for the public record. Let's call the roll. Commissioner Bro. Here. Commissioner Baker. Here. Commissioner Christian. Here. Commissioner Donnelly. Here. Commissioner Helene. Here. Commissioner Jacobs. Here. Okay. Um, let's jump right into it. We've got. Um, I do have. Um, we have the uh, butter notification cards for Fitchburg Property Landowner LLC proposed. Yes, okay. Months ago. Okay. All right. Fitchburg DPW, we have the, not the abutter cards for that. Uh, likewise. Uh, it's been continued several times. Yes. <laughs> we don't need the mass DOT. They don't have a butter notification card. Right. Uh, Barclay Enterprises, we have those. And Ridemore Heavy Duty Truck Parts, we have all we have those. And actually, Ridemore, um, I don't know if Pat McCarty is going to be, yeah, requested to continue. Okay. okay. So, under Massachusetts general law, Chapter 13, Section 40 of the Fitchburg Conservation Commission will open the hearing for notice of intent. Fitchburg Property Landowner LLC proposed 366,000 square feet warehouse and distribution building in the riverfront area, zero Crawford Street. Uh, we, who, speaking to the notice, who do we have? Should have Bill uh, Hannigan. Let me see. Mr. Hannigan. All right. How about now? Oh, now you good, Bill. All right. I, I know. I know it's not uh, many of the commission members' um, choice to do this remotely, uh, but I, we just we're running up into um, three meetings in in three different towns, so I had to you know, do the best with my resources. Um, at the last meeting, we reviewed the project. Uh, we, we have been reviewing this project with uh, both uh, the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board uh, relative to the site layout, site designs, uh, impacts to uh, many just different aspects, uh, including uh, uh, traffic, um, and riverfront areas, wetland areas, et cetera. Um, at the last meeting, uh, there was a, a a desire, um, I, and I think of all parties to try to, <clears throat> to try to move the location of the uh, the uh, westerly entrance um, to the site. Um, since that time, we've been able to uh, work with the abutting property owner to gain access uh, over a portion of their land, which we would eventually uh, obtain, um, and that would be um, to the west, right, right above where Mike's arrow is. Um, so with that um, change, we're able to uh, attain uh, better site distance uh, along Crawford Street, which is more of a planning concern, but that was one of the primary things that they were looking at. Uh, but we're also, as a side benefit, we're able to kind of pull the road away from the Nashua River uh, and, and do a little bit more uh, relative to uh, maintaining some of the natural features that are out there, along with being able to provide some additional mitigation relative to uh, the riverfront um, um, areas on the property. <clears throat> as, as you are fully aware, uh, much of the riverfront area on the site 
is previously disturbed um, and, and uh, degraded. Um, and we've provided uh, some plans um, basically that have, have shown uh, those areas along with uh, various approaches to mitigation uh, calculations and, and, and um, uh, um, area uh, providing percentages and square footage of areas that are related to the existing conditions and proposed conditions for both um, undisturbed areas, new disturbed areas, previously disturbed areas that were rendered um, impervious and other uh, non-disturbed, undisturbed areas that were uh, rendered impervious. And then from there, temporary disturbed areas are also included in that. And that's shown on a, a riverfront area review plan that was updated uh, October 7th. Um, and I believe that, that Mike has a copy of that as well. But, but the basic premise is that <clears throat> the, the original roadway location in that area, um, although it did meet um, the, the river stunt, riverfront area requirements relative to um, the amount of restoration area we were providing, um, this location of the of the western drive, uh, the other drive, Mike, um, <clears throat> provides us with a better um, a better access to the property uh, for the uh, the non truck vehicles, uh, mainly the employee vehicles, um, and it also provides better site distance capability for the overall project uh, along Crawford Street Airport Road in that particular area. It splits, uh, but it also um, increases the riverfront area. Um, offset relative to permanent um, alterations and provides additional um, um, riverfront um, mitigation um, uh, along the the new the newly located uh, contention basin along that that new access drive. So there's a lot going on, but the the um, the, the right where Mike's arrow is, down, if you go down that that detention basin right there uh, has been uh, relocated, adjusted. Uh, from the previous plan to pull um, out of the areas of, uh, area of, of woodland that's right up against the riverfront. If you can look through that, there's a, a blue line, I guess a tree line. <clears throat> that blue line is, is the location of the existing driveway further down, down south point right there. That The blue line running left to right, that, that line there, that's the existing driveway. So that area would be removed uh, of pavement and restored uh, partially by the, the construction of the detention basin and partially just by uh, general roadway and seating. The driveway now is the gray section that's, that's, um, that's further, a little further south of Mike's Arrow. Um, and, and that's, that's really the, a really good location relative to both um, access site distance um, and, and providing that mitigation. So I, I believe that was the, uh, the, the principal concern of the commission at the last meeting. Um, I believe that the peer reviewer uh, relative to wetlands was satisfied with um, the, the delineation, the, the approach to the project, the, the planning that was done to, to try to mitigate uh, the, um, the previously disturbed uh, riverfront areas as well as the uh, riverfront areas that were disturbed or being disturbed as part of this project. So, so with that, um, we would, we would entertain any questions that the commission may have further regarding the project. Thank you, Mr. Hannigan. Okay. So formal. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, did you want to um, go over anything else? Um, the, the, the four items, um, graphics you sent over late this afternoon. I mean, we're only looking at one corner of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that there were other um, significant changes. I mean, there were there were changes that we made um, on the on the eastern part of the site relative to access, um, and uh, but I believe, um, it, it, quite frankly, um, Chris is much more familiar with this product than I. Uh, but Haley may be able to speak about what changes were made to. The, I think some changes were made to the truck. Uh, trailer storage areas and stuff like that, and then we, we made final changes relative to the uh, the drainage systems that were um, originally proposed. I think that area, Haley, maybe you can jump in on that. I believe that area might have been changed a little bit, or the driveway coming through that area is kind of reconfigured a little bit. Oh, sorry, Haley. I didn't see your hand up till just now. That's okay. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, a little louder, maybe. 
How about now? Good. <laughs> oh, very good. I never ever have a problem with being heard. <laughs> I usually talk too loud. Thank you. Um, so just a quick update. We, we we actually didn't do any alterations to the trailer parking. The only site plan modification that we made was shifting the driveway about a hundred feet um, to the east that Bill mentioned. Other than that, plan changes were just in response to Ty and Bond's peer review. Um, right. As far as drainage and, and such things like that, that I am definitely not um, credible, don't have the cred credibility to talk through, but uh, was all provided in our peer review response letter prepared by Chris Anderson of Hannigan Engineering. Um, but there was another, there's no other major um, site plan modifications other than that. I will also say, which I think Bill might have mentioned, we did have a site walk with the commission back in May um, for this project. Since then, we have been, um, you know, working on the traffic engineering side of it um, to, to make sure that the impacts were um, insignificant there um, and waiting on a couple of other peer reviews. As you guys may recall, um, this project is um, located in two municipalities. So it's kind of the um, core, you know, corresponding between um, four different boards, which makes it um, certainly interesting. Um, with that said, we did receive um, planning board approval um, last week, and we're uh, attending the Lunenburg Conservation Commission hearing later this evening. Other than that, I think those were the things I just wanted to add to Bill's statements. Yeah, I will say Chris Anderson has done an absolutely amazing job in this project. I just want to, I know he's not here tonight, but he's really, he's really the, uh, the force behind this layout. And I think, it, I think it's really come together nicely. All right, thank you. Um, thank you both. Let's open the floor for public comment. Would anyone like to speak in favor of or against this hearing or would like to request more information? State your name and address for the record. Sir, are you here for this? No, no, no. Okay. I know. Is there anyone in the? Um, I don't see any hands up. Yeah, I've got a Haley Palazzola. Right, she was just Haley was just speaking. Okay. Sorry, okay. that's me. <laughs> okay. Anyone else with their? Okay. Hearing none from the public, let's turn to the commission. Are there any Madam members Chair. of the commission who would like to ask questions? Jim, right here. Mr. Smith? Madam Chair, yeah, I can, I can get the ball rolling. Go ahead. Uh, so I've got a few questions. So when we were on the site walk at the time, it wasn't clear whether you were bringing Phil in or you were taking Phil off of the site. I, I'm seeing an awful lot of grading going on. What, what what did you guys come up with for a grading plan and um, what's happening with, uh, you bring in Phil, you're taking it out? A, a lot of that depends upon <clears throat> the material. Uh, ideally, and I don't I didn't, don't know the final results of the cut fill analysis on the project. I can look that up and, and, and Haley may have that at her fingertips, but um, where you have a, a project that has a lot of disturbed material over time, um, what you really have to do to some degree is that the top layers of it, you kind of have to sift through and, and remove. And, and a lot of the topography information that we have on this is from LIDAR, <clears throat> which may have mis mistakenly uh, shown areas that are um, big mounds of, of, uh, of wood piles, as you've been on the site, there are huge mounds of of um, stacks of, of trees and, and and that may have come into the uh, equation relative to the uh, a cut fill analysis. So the, the basic premise is that we would clear the site, we would start basically sorting through the materials on the property relative to what they are and how they would be um, disposed of properly. Um, some of those materials would be hauled off site, um, some of those materials would be would be potentially um, sorted and, and stockpiled um, and used throughout the construction project. Um, there will be materials obviously brought on site for the construction. Uh, we have to bring in, uh, you know, gravel and pavement and concrete and those materials. That makes up, uh, you know, quite a bit of the material that has to be put in the ground in the final stages. Um, so at this point, it, it really depends upon uh, the makeup of the material as we sort through it. 
Um, we have a similar site that we did um, like this, and we were able to um, utilize virtually all of the on-site material to make our, our grade adjustments. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be as fortunate with this one, but um, um, I, I just don't have the – I'm going to look up at the cut fill analysis that Chris well, probably did. Yeah, Bill, what, what about the – so the – is the elevation dramatically changing from and – and, and you're right, that there's a lot of mounds of different materials, but – just trying to get a sense if you're bringing the site up or, or, or bring the significantly uh, bring the site down. I wish I had an immediate answer, but I need to do a little bit of digging on that. Um, I couldn't hear your answer. But you had to think a little bit about it. Yeah, so it, Depending upon where you are in the building, because it is a rather large footprint, the, be the beginning part of the site looks like it's it's a little bit above grade. Uh, if you look at the building um, footprint itself, the first you know third of the building probably is is um, is coming up. Um, actually, I'm sorry. These are ten footed. So there's a there's there's um, there's a, a an area that you're filling, an area that, um, that you, let me take a look for that for the cut fill analysis on this one, just so it. I make it uh, a little bit easier. It might be easier if I have that number in front of me. Um, Did you have any other questions, Mr. Smith? I do. Okay, go ahead. Why, why don't I? Yeah. Yeah, why don't I just move on? Um, so uh, you, you mentioned that this was your this was a previously this is previously disturbed roof front area, and so one of the if you're filing under that section of the roof front act, it it the Rivers Protection Act it, it talks about that the project should re result in the overall improvement. W what is the overall improvement? Well, there's a significant amount. If uh, Mike, if you could bring up the uh, the roof front area review plans. Um, I think that, that that shows it in in, in mass. Um, okay, let me uh, let me back out of this. There should be there should be a riverfront review area review plan. Two sheets. I'm trying to get back to the. The drop on okay. Bill. Bill, let me let me ask you another question while we're looking at that. That, that kind of gets to that question. W what are you doing to protect water quality? The water quality of the, of the Nashville River. So water is going to flow from this site, and ultimately it's going to drain into the river. What are you doing to protect the water quality of the river? Well, I, I think it's going to end up being enhanced because um, we're we're all the drainage meets the DEP stormwater management standards. Um, it then will go through, um, you know, through the various uh, drainage basins, most of them being infiltration um, and get into the, into the ground before they actually hit the river. So there'll be some filtration even after, even after the TSS removal um, is, is done. Um, uh, there was also phosphorus calculations that were done as part of the peer review for um, with Haley and bond, bond through the, I'm sorry, with um, Ty and Bond through the planning board process. Um, and I believe that there's only one detention basin <clears throat> near the beginning of the site that actually discharge, has a discharge to it. And I believe that that's after all the other um, um, uh, mechanisms are utilized for, for discharge. The next sheet will show that one, Mike. Put it down now. That's the, that's the existing site. And the next year is the proposed. Right there. No further. And so, the, so it's actually on the other sheet. But so this 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 drainage basin here is is um, um, if I'm not mistaken entirely exfiltration, and that itself is going to protect the river. There's a there's also you know approximately. 80 to 100 feet between the basin and the river, so itself um, is going to be uh, protected even more. There's no direct discharge at this location, but on the plan set, 
she there is a um, and I, I believe it's from the from the eastern driveway area um, there is a a pipe connection no nope. go back to Where do you want me to show, Bill? I'm looking for the. Um, I'm looking on mine because I think this. I think the, the renderings may not have the. Um, the renderings may not have the piping. It just be the grading. So the, the piping is not shown in the sheet, but if you have the um, if you have the the full set, Mike, yeah, the piping is shown. And what I'm what I'm looking for is um, sheet six of the plan set. And and the only basin that discharges to the to the um, to the river is, is actually the one right by that driveway, which which picks up the flow after everything else. So that'll be helpful to take a look at. Right there. Nope, next sheet actually works better. Yep. Slide down just a hair. Oh. Hold on. Ow. Let me get it back up. Yep. While that's loading, um, Mike, do you mind if I answer two other um, questions from Tim? Um, I just heard from Chris. So uh, in response to the cut and fill, it's effectively a balanced site, but as um, Bill Hannigan mentioned, uh, the unknown conditions of the soils and the stockpiles will ultimately require enough fill material for the site. Um, but we won't know the exact numbers until we finish all of our soil testing. Um, in regards to the improvements to the riverfront areas, he said we'll be um, implementing a wildflower seed mix and also removing invasive um, plantings along the river. And that's being done both in Lemister and Fitchburg and Lemonburg. I'm sorry. Thank you, Haley. Mm -hmm. And can you, can you provide some detail? How, how are you going to remove the invasive species? What, what are the invasive species and how are you going to go about doing it? Are you, are you using chemical or are you doing it mechanically? It, it, it depends upon the, obviously, the, the size of the, um, the invasive. Um, if it, it, it's, it, you know, you don't like using the chemical, but that sometimes is the most effective way of doing it at a uh, uh, younger growth of those. But then on some of them, you're going to have to pull them out because they're they're going to be um, they're they're too large for chemical treatment. And you and, and many of the areas that we're doing it in are going to be restored with a different land cover at the end of the day. Um, but the areas where we're going through and, and hand picking out what we're doing, it will probably have to be done. Um, Potentially, if they're if they're large, uh, because some of these areas are, are pretty are pretty thick, we may have to cut to the ground and then chemically uh, treat the stumps uh, to get rid of them, or the you know the root system from that method. I've, I've, I'm not I'm not an expert on 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 that particular aspect, but I've I've been involved with enough to know that it's usually a combination of the two, um, and that's probably what we would be end up, end up doing. Yeah, so I'm thinking what you guys are addressing is the knotweed, and and a lot of it is on the banks of the of the river, and uh, my only concern is um, sometimes is is you know it's bad that it's invasive species, but 
it, it, a lot of that knotweed is also holding the, stabilizing the soils along the bank. I don't think we're doing anything that close to the river. Okay. At all. Yeah. So, um, so may, maybe we just need to review at some point where, uh, the area. Well, the, the area, the area um, that is shown on, on the riverfront review area plan. Okay. Um, it's a, it's a, um, it, most of it is, is, I'm looking at the, the one I have in the office. Most of it is outside the 50 foot buffer zone. Uh, so we're not getting, we're not getting within 50 feet of the wetlands and subsequently therefore 50 feet of the river. And, and some of it's actually more than 100 feet from the Nashua. Um, and if we can get back to that other plan. So this, this plan is what we were gonna look at to, to show the, um, Piping, yeah. So this this is the this is the one discharge that we have a physical discharge right here. We have one here, and I believe there's one in the basin to the north. But this um, this one more is, is more of an overflow. Um, this right there. <clears throat> that one. And it, this one? Nope. There's that one, and you just scan up a little bit more. We we oh, added. Okay. We added a relief drain at this location here. Um, one is we added one in between the two basins in case one became clogged. Uh, but but the, the outlet structure here, um, it's predominantly to, to to take any overflow or any any excessive flows that that you might get um, above above the the 50 year storm. I believe is what we had worked at 25 to 50 year storms. So the. the do you have an adequate uh, stone apron or, or something that oh, yeah, yeah. the there's, energy? There's a stone apron at the end. Um, there's size, there's size for the pipe sizes, um, and that's a detail that's on the plans. Um, and, and relative to pitch and velocity as well, like these are a little longer than these are, so this must be very flat. Um, but yeah, that's all figured into everything. Um, Mike, I, I hate to do this to you, but if you could flip back to the Riverfront Area re Review Plan, mm -hmm. I can okay. show. Bill, while he's doing that, you, you said that the project does meet the storm, the DEP stormwater standards? Yes. And it sounds like you had uh, Ty and Bond did a review um, yeah, but, yeah. with the planning board. Ty, so Ty, what, what, what stage is that at? Ty and Bond did a review. You guys responded. Did Ty and Bond review your responses and approve the responses? That's you right, haven't Jim. heard back on yeah. the, oh, we did get those, Mike? We, I believe we have approval from the planning board. We right. do have approval from planning board, but I don't think right. we've seen final. It was conditional upon five final comments from Ty and Bond, which I don't think we have yet. Yeah, because, you know, just sometimes Ty and Bond may, may uh, recommend an approval, but they also may recommend approval with conditions, and, and it would be good to know what those conditions are. So here's the riverfront plan, uh, Bill. The, uh, go to the other sheet, the other sheet, please. So um, you zoom in. Um, it's hard to see, but the, the little, you, so the, the, the area that has, like, it looks like green dots, very light green dots, which you probably can't see, but it's between. Oh, I see, I think. Yeah, right there. That's all the riverfront restoration area, uh, Tim. Yep. Which is outside the basin, but not, not within, for example, the 50 foot buffer zones right there. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's work that's, you know, there's a cart, actually I'm looking at it now, there's actually a cart road, and so we're kind of using that in that particular area as our, as our limit. Um, and, then, and then the erosion controls in that area as well. So that's, that's really the limit of work as well. Um, so that, that's how close we're getting to the river front here. We're not getting down near the wetlands or the, um, or the, um, not yeah, on that area. I see you're not in a no disturb zone. And when we were out in sight, I, I, I recall we actually we did talk about this area. We took a look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what it could, as long as we're, we're zoomed in, uh, where are the erosion sedimentation controls proposed, and what what are they? I believe that that 
that longer dashed line right there is the road control. And it's typically straw wattles and um, um, uh, uh, siltation fence. But let me look at the detail on my set. While you're looking for that, uh, quick question: uh, Did you guys do soil borings? We did soil and, and, testings in all in all of the detention basins except for one, and that was a comment from Ty and Vaughn as well. And the reason we didn't do a um, in the the detention basin we didn't do a soil test in is the one um, right up near um, in the truck area. And the reason we didn't do that was because of the fact there's a 30 foot drop. I'm sorry, it's, it's um, it might be the one that I'm thinking of. It might be the one. Let me just get to the right sheet. There, there are two questions that I'm trying to answer right now. Um, yeah. So th there's a there's right above right where we have the the, the new driveway entrance coming in. There's a detention base in each side of the, the um, there's one on the, on, the, on the left side of the west entrance and on the right side of the east entrance. Those basins there, the bottom of those ba bases are about 30 or 40 feet above or 20 or 30 feet above the, the abutter to, to, that's on um, Crawford Street. Um, so w us doing, we, we can't dig down deep enough to the bottom of those because they're large mounds of material. So we agreed that when we get when we get the testing, when we get the area um, graded, we would end up doing another test pit at that just to confirm. But the likelihood of that not meeting uh, groundwater, or not intercepting groundwater, is pretty high because of the fact that we're so high above the adjacent land, and it's a it's a very consistent sand material once you get through the the disturbed uh, material that's on the site. Okay. Um. I, 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 I'm sure you, you're probably right. You probably do have the, the silt waddles, and we can we can look at that afterwards too. Um, what, when did you want to start the construction, and what is the duration um, for the construction phase? I can answer that, Tim. Um, so we would look to um, pending we get all all of our approvals before the end of the year. Uh, we would look to mobilize um, in the spring. Um, and I expect uh, between 14 and 16 months of construction from start to finish. Um, that's obviously moving on the uh, it fast, fast as possible. Um, a little yeah, it, it seems aggressive. Yeah, uh, it's been done. I can tell you we've done it before, <laughs> not making it up, but um, it would be dependent on if we secured a tenant and what their timing was. So we could move that fast if need to. Otherwise, um, probably closer to 16 to 18 months. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ma Madam Chair, that's all the, the questions I had. Thank you, Mr. Just, Smith. Just, just I to, have a just couple follow-up questions. It is silt waddles and, um, and uh, silt uh, silt fencing. Sorry, spell me. Yep, me Okay. Um, are there any commissioners that have follow-up questions from uh, what we've just heard? I have a, I have two. Is um, my concern would be: Is there a bond? Do we want to have a bond on this that they tear up all these piles, and um, the they don't even have a tenant yet? And um, what are we going to do if <laughs> the site is left, and um, now we've got uh, some a decrease in water quality <laughs> in the in the Nashville River? Um, that's one question. And then uh, my second question is um, more of a, just a theoretical question, but I, I asked the commissioners, we had Dr. Lebo here um, uh, over and over again with this incredible restoration that was done along the Nashville River. And in, in my opinion, um, set a standard for what we can expect from people who are doing work along the Nashville River, which is um, uh, 
a federally protected river and also, if memory serves me correctly, um, was part of the formulation of the Clean Water Act back in the 70s. And, and so I ask that we set a standard or we acknowledge that a standard has been set by uh, Dr. Lebo and the work that they did uh, along the Nashua River, which was an incredible and a beautiful restoration. Um, and uh, so the bond amount, is there a bond? Are we protecting? Do you want to require one? Well, I mean, I'm just saying there's a huge amount of work that's going to happen here. There's a great deal of soil that's going to be disturbed. We've asked for bond amounts on smaller parcels. Yeah, it, it seems reasonable to request one on a, a project of this scale. I was uh, thinking the same. Uh, I think it's completely reasonable um, in this is one of the lots in our city that does abut a large portion of the shoreline and the bank of the river. Um, so I think it's a, an important thing to consider and I would most likely vote in favor of that, Tracy. Has the planning, has the planning department asked for a bond of any sort or? Planning board, you mean? Yeah, no, there wasn't board. a condition of approval. Well, if I could ask Bill, because you, I think I recall you had mentioned you had done a few other of these sort of big box projects. Is that, um, well, what would you estimate um, the value of bond for such a large site such as this, like a site restoration bond, if something went terribly haywire? Um, the other projects we work on have not had a bond request except for work that was done off-site for street work and stuff like that. Okay. See if, um, I believe, Nick was uh, on. Yeah, he was here. Yeah, I would, I would, Madam Chair, I was going to say that's, that's how we've done it in the past is the, the uh, city engineer or DPW commissioner has uh, come up with a bond amount and, and they calculate, they, they make a determination if the developer was going to uh, uh, clear, clear and grub the site and then, and, then, uh, and then for some reason couldn't do restoration, what would the cost be to just stabilize the site? Um, Jeff, um, Hillman, not to put you on the spot, but I, I thought I saw Nick Erickson's name here earlier. I don't see it now. So I don't know. No, I see him. Oh, sorry. Here you go. I see Nick there. Yep. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. yep. I'd be happy to, to calculate a bond amount for, for this site. Uh, I agree with uh, Tim Smith. Basically, assume the worst that the site is disturbed and then, uh, you know, say the contractor walks or, or whatever happens, um, and then DPW has to come in and hire a contractor to stabilize the site. So the bond amount would be would be for that amount. Um, just ballpark off the top of my head, I would guess somewhere in the order of like a, a 40 or $50,000 effort to do such a thing. But I'll, I'll work through some calculations and come up with an amount if that's um, what the commission determines is the best option here. Tracy, and I, and I say that I, I think the plan as it was presented tonight um, holds some promise. I just, as I said, it's one of the larger lots in our city uh, for footage along the river. And I think if we want to uphold that standard uh, that you reiterated, then a bond for a project of this nature would probably help uh, upkeep that standard. So we're going to put that in the order of conditions? You got my vote. Yeah. Okay. Put it as a special condition if that's okay. what the commission votes to do. Do we have a... Madam Chair? Yes. Um, I, I just have a question about about this. I, I am absolutely unfamiliar with this other Nashua River project that you're speaking of. And I'm a little bit concerned about becoming subject to a condition of a, on a project that is basically a restoration of a of a of a of a historically utilized site by the city 
um, uh, a lot of essentially a, a dumping grounds of some sort, a, a recycling area of some sort, and then to try to re, you know, meet some standard that we don't know what that standard is. There's no documentation of what that standard would be and how we would meet it. Um, and the other, the, the bigger factor on that is we're not actually doing work right at the natural river, which I, I think that what you're implying is that the other product was right along, we did work right along the river. So yeah, it was. I, That's true, I, Mr. Hannigan. You're not yeah, in the, it's not a similar, exactly similar project. I, I would have to agree with Mr. Hannigan that historically this was a filter bed. It was a filtration plant. The city has used it as a dump or allowed dumping there for 50 years. Uh, this is not the cream of the crop of the city. Uh, I, I agree with his sentiment. I do, as, as do I. You know, any but work I, I done do there, think you we would also, think would have to be an improvement. Absolutely. And, and they aren't in up to the river area. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, a standard's been set, um, folks, well, for not, work along the natural river. Thank you, Mr. Hannigan. I mean, a standard's been set for work along the actual work mm -hmm. on the bank. And um, it's been set very high. And now this project isn't coming up to the riverbank itself. But um, I, I felt um, like it was my duty as a commissioner to acknowledge that a standard has been set. And, um, and I urge us to, to consider it when we look at these projects that would be of similar um, extent as that restoration project. As far as I'm concerned, the proximity is relevant. Um, I know there's bylaws decoding this lot's exact proximity to the banks of the river, but again, I, I kind of back that. We've seen how some progress can be set moving forward, and I think there's enough parallel to apply the bond on this one. Okay. So we'll, um, can we have a, a motion? I'll motion to Let's see. Oh, okay. here, wait a second. close the hearing. Yeah, let me close the hearing first. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> hearing no from uh, no more from. Yeah. Uh, while we're in the while we're setting standards, uh, could we include a maintenance plan recorded on the deed for the uh, uh, for the uh, detention pond? Uh, yearly, by by annual, by two, five years plan, but recorded on the deed for this owner and subsequent owners. That's a requirement of the, of the planning board's approval anyway. And it's required by the city code too. Nick reminds us that every, every meeting, that it needs to be recorded. The, the operation and the stormwater operation and maintenance uh, plan. Anything more? Commissioner Donnelly? Okay, that was actually on my, that was the third thing on my list, so thank you. Um, so hearing no more, f hearing no more from the... Um if I may, uh, Tim Smith asked quite a few questions uh, and then moved on to another question prior to getting an answer to several of them. Uh, I was wondering if Mr. Smith was satisfied with the questions and the answers received. Yeah, uh, so uh, I have down one of the open questions is they, was whether, uh, what was the results of the fill analysis, cut and fill analysis? And that was, that was answered effectively, it's a balanced site. Um, the other was open question that was, uh, what was the uh, resulting improvement to the site to comply with the uh, previously disturbed riverfront regulation? and they are uh, eliminating invasive species and, and planting the, the wild flowers. Um, and then um, I asked about the road sedimentation uh, controls and we heard silt, uh, silt wattles and silt fence. So I believe all the, all the, uh, the questions I had asked are, are, have, been, have been responded to and, and I'm satisfied, thank you. Well, there was one thing that didn't get answered entirely, and that is whether um, tie and bond is satisfied with the revisions that were that, proposed yep. as a result of mm -hmm. their comments. Yeah, and we're, we'll check on that with tie and bond, because that, as Haley had mentioned, that was a condition of the planning board's approval. But they're like a final sign off from tie and bond. 
Oh, there, there was. Okay, I, I missed that. Thank you. So we can put that in our, mm -hmm. as an order, a special order. And then the bond amount to be determined right. by... Determined by uh, Fitchburg DPW. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Hearing no more from the commission, uh, the chair closes the hearing for notice of intent uh, Fitchburg Property Landowner, LLC. This is uh, proposed 360,000 square foot warehouse and distribution building in the riverfront area, zero Crawford Street. Um, let's see. Do we have a motion? Motion to accept the plan is submitted with uh, additional uh, provisions previously voted on. Second that. Okay, we have the uh, boilerplate order of conditions, including the special conditions, the pre-construction hearing with the Fitchburg uh, agent, the environmental consultant, the contractor, and the heavy equipment operators. Um, let's see, we'll call a vote. Uh, Commissioner Bro, Aye. Commissioner Baker? Aye. Commissioner Christian? Aye. Commissioner Donnelly? Aye. Commissioner Helene? Aye. Commissioner Jacobs? Aye. The motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Hannigan. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, folks. Um, do we have okay. to sign something? Mm, sure. Do you want to do that <laughs> as we go or at the end? You guys or, need a second? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Nick Erickson, next item was one of yours on Arba Way. Um, while the commission members are signing thing, you want to just give an update on, on that? If you could. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mike. I, I was expecting a final draft of the third party review conducted by Fuston O'Neill today. Uh, I called uh, Jason Ledoux and sent him an email, and I got no response. So uh, I don't have anything further to add this evening, and I would respectfully request a continuance to the next meeting. Um, and hopefully by then I get the draft uh, or the final version of the third party review to provide to uh, the commissioners. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Can we have a, a motion to continue this to um, December 7th? December 7th. December 7th. So I moved. Motion to continue this to December 7th. Between okay, uh, Mary, yeah, I was gonna try to say, I think Mary did, yeah. I don't, I couldn't hear her. <laughs> Mary, did you, uh, Commissioner Helene, did you comment? Yes, I did. Yep, no, she just said, oh, oh, she did was second it. Oh, okay. she seconded. Okay, uh, Commissioner Bro, aye, Commissioner Baker, aye, Commissioner Christian, aye, Commissioner Donnelly, aye, Commissioner Helene, aye, Commissioner Jacobs, aye. Motion passes. We'll uh, see you. We'll revisit this next month on the December 7th meeting. Thank you, commissioners, and I appreciate your patience with this. I know it's taken a long time. Oh, thanks. Gotcha. You're welcome, Nick. All right, moving on. Under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 13, Section 40. The Fitchburg Conservation Commission will open the hearing for mass DOT paving and related work on Route 2. Uh, speaking to the uh, notice. Uh, um, I believe we have Sarah from uh, good BSC. Good evening. Yep. And who else, Sarah? Uh, good evening. Hi, yes. Um, so I'm uh, so Sarah Crysell from BSC Group. Um, unfortunately, I actually have another hearing in about 23 minutes, so I'm going to present the uh, um, presents uh, some of the information, and then I've got my colleague uh, Diana Walden from BSC Group also here, uh, and then also Courtney Walker from MassDOT Environmental has uh, joined us uh, for this evening as well. Okay, all three of you are unmuted, so just take it away. 
Yeah. Thank you so much. So the proposed work is associated with roadway resurfacing, maintenance, and vegetation ma management for road safety maintenance along Route 2 from uh, the 94.9 uh, mile marker just east of the ramps to Princeton Road. Um, at, well, that's the first location, uh, to the 97.9 mile marker on the Fitchburg Lemonster Municipal Line in Fitchburg, Mass. And so MassDOT is seeking a negative determination for the proposed work. The majority of the proposed work associated with the project includes pavement milling and resurfacing, adjusting and cleaning out of drainage structures, and replacing substandard guardrail. These are all considered minor activities within the buffer zone or riverfront area and are not subject to regulation under the Wetlands Protection Act per 310 CMR, 1002, 2B1, and 2P. The median and side slopes of Route 2 have been managed over the years by cutting vegetation to maintain clear guardrails, signs, and lines of sight for motorists. This maintenance work is necessary within the state highway layout in order to provide vehicular safety for the motoring public. All proposed work will take place within the state highway layout, but does extend off the edge of the paved roadway. In addition, some of the proposed vegetation management work required to maintain road safety is not subject to regulation under the Wetland Protection Act if it will occur only in the buffer zone and or riverfront area per 310 CMR 1002 2B 2N and within six feet of the guardrail. Therefore, the RDA before you is for the maintenance of vegetation within the jurisdictional resource areas, such as BLSF and BVW, and for vegetation management for areas beyond the distance limits of the Wetland Protection Act minor activities. The vegetation work will occur within previously managed areas along Route 2 within the state highway layout, right-of-way side slopes. All vegetation clearing will occur within previously disturbed areas within 40 feet off of the edge of pavement in areas where no guardrail is present. Where guardrail is present and along ramps, it will only be cleared 20 feet back. Cutting will be either by hand or mechanical means using a brush hog or similar machinery, and the vegetation will either be chipped or ground and spread appropriately on site, outside of wetlands, and in locations directed by the MassDOT resident engineer or properly disposed of off-site. Proposed vegetation management work will likely occur within riverfront area and the 100-foot buffer zone to BVW and Bank, BVW itself, BLSF, ORW watersheds, and natural heritage priority and an estimated habitat. Any tree or brush removal in jurisdictional wetland resource areas will occur by hand or other methods that avoid ground disturbance. Work is proposed within previously maintained areas along the highway and is not expected to adversely impact wetland resource areas. MassDOT's district environmental engineer will mark the location of BBWs and ORW wetland jurisdictional limits along the project route within the city of Fitchburg to provide guidance to the contractor and to ensure vegetation clearing is completed by hand in those areas. Additionally, MassDOT received a letter from Natural Heritage on October 31st, 2022, indicating that, quote, this project, as currently proposed, will not result in a prohibited take of state-listed rare species. Again, as I noted, because the area does occur within natural heritage uh, habitat. Uh, so lastly, the contractor will employ um, the, uh, or, or uh, you know, will avoid or, or minimize impacts to resource areas, including the use of appropriate erosion sediment controls near jurisdictional areas at the discretion of MassDOT. And with that, we'd like to open it up to any questions from the commission. Thank you, Sarah. Of course, I do apologize. I do need to head out to another it's okay. hearing. Okay, it's um, understandable. But, uh, thank you all, and um, again, Diana and Courtney will be able to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's open the floor for public comment. Is there anyone here who would like to ask questions? I just one for Diana. Um, that letter from Natural Heritage um, that Sarah mentioned. Could you make sure that that's forwarded over to us? Because that was sure. after the filing of the RDA, right? It was, yes. And um, MassDOT has um, an internal protocol and a reviewer specific to them over at Natural Heritage. They have a, a pretty quick turnaround process for, for projects that are in Natural Heritage um, priority and estimated habitat. So we can definitely get that letter over to you guys. Okay, thanks. I'd be happy to send that. Sorry, I'm still here. Um, I, Sarah, I, I'd be happy to send that either tonight or, or tomorrow. Not a problem. Thank you. 
Um, any commissioners with questions? Mr. Smith? Yeah, yeah, I have a, just a couple questions. Um, so you, you filed with Natural Heritage, and I assume you, you propose steps to take to protect the uh, rare species. Could you tell us what those steps are? I honestly, um, I'm not even sure uh, which species we have, just because the uh, the DOT staff does take care of that internally. So they set up protocols, and I think they have a list of best management practices that they use. Um, you know, if it's all turtles, this is what they do. If it's all, uh, you know, a plant, this is what they do, kind of thing. Um, so un unless Courtney knows um, better than I do, we, it might be something that we can ask uh, David Paulson who used to be at Natural Heritage has since moved to uh, Mass DOT and, you know, fills a very similar role. Uh, we can definitely ask him, you know, what species would it be and what BMPs do they need to do? Um, a lot of times if you're within 10 feet of a paved roadway, they even consider work exempt. In this case, we are further than 10 feet um, in some of the clearing areas, but we can definitely ask um, what it is, you know, in this case, what do they need to do? Right. I, I, I just just because I think that the commission, if 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 they know what the BMPs are, the commission's local, and, and if they see something that's not in compliance with the BMP, then they uh, they they can take the appropriate steps. I think maybe Courtney was. Gonna say yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah, I don't have any further information on any of the, the state listed species that um, were found for this project specifically, but we can definitely, of course, get you more information on that. Okay, it, 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 quite frankly, too, we're, so we have other projects um, that could impact that rare species, and it would be good to know what, what the BMPs are. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, um, so another question, um, so for the, the catch basin work, right? do you guys install the, the, the silt socks? Is that how you protect um, uh, drainage from, um, contaminated drainage from getting into the, uh, the river, the National River? I or, do. Or, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I was just gonna say, at this point, the BMPs I've seen are the, uh, the wattles or the silt socks. Mm -hmm. um, we can definitely ask the resident engineer if if they could look into silt sacks on, on the catch basins in this case. I know, unfortunately, a lot of times, um, just practicality, they do, they t can tend to flood roadways. If they, if you get a really torrential kind of downpour, um, you know, they'll, they'll fill up and sometimes flood the roadways. I'm not sure with a highway like this, if that's something that they can um, take a chance on, but we'll, yeah. we can definitely ask the resident engineer if there's, um, you know, if they could like loop the, you know, the waddles around it. I don't know if that's a, uh, you know, something that could be potentially a barrier to motorists, but Courtney, do you have any more ideas about that? Or, or could we ask uh, Tracy and others? Um, it would probably be, I guess best to ask Tracy, because I know with the sediment control barriers anyways to begin with, they are determined by the, you know, the means and the methods of the contractor. So it would be more so up to them and what they plan to use. Um, no, so yeah, I, I, I know that the, the silt sacks, they end up um, catching every, the rainstorm, they end up catching all the trash and then they, uh, they get clogged and then there's uh, resulting flooding. So a lot of times what, uh, what, act, what the, the reality is, what happens is, is uh, the contractor will uh, make holes in the silt sack, silt um, uh, yeah, I've sacks. Seen that too. <laughs> yeah, and, and so they're really yeah. not serving any purpose, they, they, <laughs> it, right? So that, that that's something you probably want to avoid. Yeah, I know. Mainly in the specs for this project, it's like for for the small areas of disturbance, the the main uh, sediment control methods that may be chosen are, of course, the compost filter tubes and straw bales. But um, that, of course, will be determined by the contractor. Okay, yeah, I, I, I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, let's see, any commissioners? Thank you for the notification. 
I, I heard your, uh, I'm sorry, Mary, I think you're saying something. Go ahead. Little. Sorry, it's hard on computer. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I listened to BSC's group, BSC group's um, explanation, um, but I am a little bit concerned nonetheless that there's a good stretch of this uh, proposed work that's right along No Town Reservoir, which is also actually right along the boundary of our city and, and Lemonsters. And then um, further downstream, uh, significant stretches right along Manusnock Brook, past their filter filtration plant, also along the, uh, mostly in, in Fitchburg actually, um, I believe that the, the boundary follows just to the south of Route 2 right. all along. So have we got any uh, input from Lemonster or concerns on, on their part since it's their water supply that's most at risk? We did not copy Lemonster um, only because uh, MassDOT typically has the um, the policy or, or the exemption of not having notify abutters. You know, if this had been a, a typical project, um, they would have been in, in a butter to receive at least notification of the hearing. Um, and I believe there's only certain circumstances where you need to copy a neighboring town on a, on a notice of intent. Um, we could certainly reach out um, and just let them know that this is happening but not within their jurisdiction and that we've been before you. Well, I think, it'd be, I think it'd be appropriate. Again, this is their water supply, not ours. Uh, it happens to be right on the border of the two towns' uh, proper, uh, you know, jurisdictions. But it seems odd that they wouldn't be notified or informed and have any opportunity to weigh in. The state highway layout line runs right along the boundary, um, so technically all work is in Fitchburg. Um, but again, Courtney and I can can talk about notifying Lemonster, at least you know, sending a sending a notification letter type thing that we've been before you. Uh, okay, you know, thank, there you. Isn't, thank you. Thank um, you. We also noted that you know these are public water supplies, outstanding resource waters. Uh, zone zone A, you know, within 400 feet of the banks, so any wetlands in there would be outstanding resource waters themselves, 200 feet of the tributaries, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's why, you know, we are avoiding direct wetland impacts in those locations and, and specifically having the district engin environmental engineer mark out, you know, those watersheds to let them know that these are particularly sensitive, particularly sensitive waters. And, um, you know, just, just to make sure everybody's absolutely notified on board that, you know, these cannot be impacted um, with the exception of, of foot traffic. I see they are staying out of the vernal, they're staying far from the, ver the potential vernal pools. Let's see, um, any more from the commission? Hearing none, um, the chair closes the hearing for request for determination of applicability. Um, can I have a motion and a second? Uh, motion to um, approve a denial for request for determination on this project. Second. Second, <clears throat> okay. I'm going to call the roll. Commissioner Bro. Aye. Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Christian. Aye. Commissioner Donnelly. Aye. Commissioner Helene. Aye. Commissioner Jacobs. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, negative determination of applicability. Right. Right. That's that's what. I, I think you. Yeah, I was going to ask backwards. if that was. Yeah. Got <laughs> you got it. And in this case, I think the appropriate box to check under the because there's several under negative determination. 
Um, work described is within an area subject to protection of the act, but will not remove, fill, dredge, or alter that area. Therefore, it does not require filing of a notice of intent. Okay. And let's pass that over. Dan, well, well, you guys are still here. Just a question. Uh, you mentioned chipping um, trees potentially. Have as part of this road maintenance project, have you or Mass DOT noticed any invasive um, insects like spotted lanternfly, which are in both Fitchburg and Leominster now, in certain Interesting. areas? Interesting. I haven't seen one personally. Um, I know. I you know. I'm just hearing reports from. Mid-Atlantic states that people were just bombarded with them this summer. I haven't seen one personally. I'm keeping my eyes out, but I haven't seen one. Oh, yeah, right, behind this, <laughs> right behind this building where we are here really? uh, on well, uh, on the national. Uh, yeah. Did we ever talk to Ayer about that? They have a lot of railroad. Wasn't it along the railroads that they're moving? That, that could well be one conduit. Yeah. Bugs hopping off the uh, trains. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, thank you for your time. Yes, thank right. you. Good Have night. a great night. Mm, good night. All right. Uh, let's get Mike, back up. Who's, yep. who's, do we know this gentleman here? Yes, very well. Who is it? It's John Barrett. He's been here before. Okay. No. I, okay. Hi. Okay. Hi, Mr. Barrett. You're here from Mad River, Mad I assume. River. Okay. Okay. So moving forward, under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 13, Section 40, the Fitchburg Conservation Commission will open the hearing for notice of intent, Barclay Enterprises, four new single-family dwellings, lots one, two, three, eight, Sheldon Road. Um, and I'm going to uh, allow, I, I wasn't here for the last meeting, so, um, and I haven't been able to watch it yet, so I'll, I'll let, go ahead, Joyce. Um, and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we will be able to talk about um, the balance of the Sheldon Road property, the Adams LLC property. We're gonna talk about that later, but we have made a determination that we can proceed with your hearings on these lots and we will discuss the violation on Mr. Adams at the violation and enforcement part of our meeting. So we are prepared to proceed. If I could cut through the chase, I, I'd like to make a motion to uh, uh, accept the plan as submitted on lots one, two, and eight. And if we, if, if the applicant agrees, uh, we could release those immediately and and center our discussion around lot three. I, I, agree. I have one comment to add with those. Um, on lots, uh, actually two. Um, which is now 80 Sheldon Street, because we, you know, it's now no longer lots one, two, and eight, but 80 Sheldon Street, the first one, as we issue the order of condition for that, if we go forward, there is the detention pond that is um, specked out in the plans for drainage. I would um, request that we issue a perpetual order of condition um, and Tim, I might need your assistance with the actual verbiage, but the um, intent is that the owner shall maintain the detention basin to ensure it functions as originally designed, so that as each consecutive owner goes on and on and on, this stays with the deed. Um, and the concern that we have about the runoff should be maintained throughout successive owners. Tim, did I kind of phrase that properly? Perfectly. Happy yep. to include I, I that agree. in my motion. Yeah. All right, so then the same would apply um, 
in lot eight. That's one, two, three, and lot eight also has the detention basin that we would like to, I recommend that we add the perpetual condition also to maintain that detention basin. Happy to include that in my motion. So just to be clear, Joy, sorry, one, lots one and eight. Lots um, 80, which is lot eight, has the detention basin and on the ones that um, Commissioner Donnelly is talking about right now. Um, there is also one in lot one. Um, I'm not sure how we would, that actually is that in the deed of lot one or lot two. Paul, can you take a look at that? Um, because the, the drainage basin is at the bottom of where those two houses come in. So which deed would that apply to? I believe that it's on lot two, which is now 182 Sheldon. Oh, right, right, because you can see the, the, the basin at the bottom and the house and the way that, because that has the kind of. Uh, yes, yeah, that would actually be uh, lot one which is uh, 196 Sheldon. Okay, uh, so I'm looking file at File 1550724. Yeah. Okay, so it is one. So the order of condition for lot one would have the perpetual condition. Um, that lot one and two is taken care of by that one basin, but it's on that deed. And then lot eight. So you need to amend your, your motion to, to switch it from two to one? Is that right? Yes. So I'd like to amend the, the motion that on lots one, which is 196 Sheldon, and lot eight, which is 80 Sheldon, we include a perpetual order of condition requiring owner shall maintain detention basin to ensure it functions as originally designed. Okay. There was a second to that. Yeah, I, I was going to say I okay. thought it was going to come about, but I will second that. Okay. Yeah. Let's call the roll. Commissioner Bro. Aye. Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Christian. Aye. Commissioner Donnelly. Aye. Commissioner Helene. Aye. Commissioner Jacobs. Aye. Okay, the motion passes um, with the amendments. Thank you. Okay, that leaves us with lot three. That leaves us with lot three. And nine, right? No, only the, the only subject tonight was lots um, one, two, three, and eight. Oh, okay. Nine's already done and built. Th thank you. Okay, um, so this is lot three. Do we have uh, Mr. Grasowitz uh, speaking to the lot three? Is this? Uh, let, me, let me get lot, oh, sorry, I'll, let me, in the meantime, let me get lot three up on the screen. So we can see. Okay. Mr. Grasowitz, your how's your grandson way. doing? Pardon me? How's your grandson doing? Great. It was such a pleasure to work with him. <laughs> I think you're lucky to have him. He's taking over the business, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. I 
Okay. Don't worry, we'll keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so help me out, Paul. This is three. That's right? okay. That's lot three, one sixty-eight, and um, that's the one we made a uh, you know a few revisions to to uh, basically um, restore the whole lot area within Jameson's ownership on that lot. So we've got uh, you know we've got. A sediment four bay, we've got a basin, we've got an earthen berm uh, to keep the water away from going down the slope towards the wetlands. Um, we've got another, another berm, a stone berm, to, in case uh, water gets, uh, uh, you know, concentrated, we can, we can break it up there. So our intent is to, uh, you know, make lot three nice and have some growth on it where it doesn't now. And I know this is the, uh, you know, the, the issue of only practical access to land of others be behind us. So. Um. But is that it? Yeah. That's, thank you. Okay. No. Thank you. I think we've done everything we we can on that and what we've been asked to. And so. Thank you, Mr. Brazowitz. <laughs> Uh, let's Madam open. Chair. Oh, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, if I could just just quickly ask, is do, do we know that this is the only practical ac access because at the last hearing, someone had said that um, Mr. Adams also retains ownership of the, the old farmhouse and, and he has access to that property. Um, do we know if that's the case? Mr. Smith, I think I can answer that. This is Joyce. Um, on the assessor's map that's currently on file, Mr. Adams has retained a small strip of land um, that is now called 46 Sheldon, and that is his access to the 38 acres that remains in the back. So none of the lots up front um, are required to have access to the property with the violation. And Joyce, do you know if that strip of land is it is it uh, blocked by any any wetlands or anything? So would would it yes. would it cause a, a would it require a wetland crossing to go and do the restoration on uh, I believe Sheldon it, Brook? Yes, I believe it would. And it's pretty narrow, so I mean, I, we haven't looked at it in that light. I don't know what kind of equipment we could get in there. The assessor's map does not show, you know, the dimensions per se of the lot and, and that like right away that's been left. But um, yeah, there would be some some concerns about getting in there. What's this? These are combined now. Oh. The the the, uh, the owner. Subdivided that at his own peril, am I right? Okay. Tim? Well, he left the only Four. access to the, the, the remainder over wetlands. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so if it's not accessible, it's not accessible, and that's the way he left it. So, Tim, I, from an engineering standpoint, uh, lot number three, we're on now, and the uh, uh, Restoration of that roadway from an engineering standpoint. Does that look copacetic? Um, what yeah, so so they're they're proposing to, to stable yes, it does and they're proposing to stabilize the entire lot Which is which is what needs to happen okay. Swift the SWIP, the federal SWIP. Tim, um, SWIP, SWIFT, uh, the stormwater management. Yeah, uh, stormwater come, pollution prevention came, plan. Came to our attention that uh, the entire project, if it exceeds five developments, is required to file. And this would be the fifth of that project or whatever. Has, well, has well, it been so, filed? Yeah, so that so under under NEPDES, which is a, uh, a, natu a, a national uh, law, 
They have to file. So if you're if you're disturbing over an acre of land, you have to file a uh, under NEPTI. You have to file a stormwater pollution prevention plan. So it's it, a stormwater pollution prevention plan. Really is, it's it's like an uh, it's an erosion plan, and you have to do uh, inspections uh, periodically to show compliance with that SWIP plan. And and that what to my best of my knowledge that wasn't done on the site. And it should have been done. When we, uh, when we file the uh, stormwater inspection checklist, there's an option on there to say it's already been, it's already been completed or it will be completed as part of, um, you know, as part of the approval. So obviously um, we weren't going we weren't going to file that and prepare it without having knowing we we're going to get orders or conditions to proceed with the work. So that's why they have the checklist set up that way. DEP, so you have to do it. You're saying, yes, I'm, I've got, I'm going to do it. <laughs> but we, we want to get through the individual orders first. Tim, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I mean, just let me just say, though, that the commission here, could have <laughs> issued a violation enforcement yeah, you approved it. order um, <laughs> for this property and ignored the, the notice of intent. Okay. Right? Because the, the, the lot right now, as it currently exists, is in, in violation. Because that erosion goes from all the way from lot three, three all the way. There's a, uh, uh, it's pretty clear by the, the, the rutting down the entire length of the road. It, it's, uh, uh, there's erosion that's occurred all the way to Sheldon Brook and, and to Sheldon Pond. So how does that address the SWIP? So the SWIP would, would stabilize this site. And again, and I, 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 this, the site needs to be stable, whether it's through an enforcement order or approving the an order of conditions, the, the, the site needs to be stabilized. I was going to include on lot three a, a, a construction plan, and uh, the first thing on the plan would be to stabilize the site and have it functioning. Yep, and, and may, maybe have the site stabilized first, and, and then uh, may, may, maybe uh, this, this site has to be uh, some some type of a phased approach. I know it's it's only one lot, but make sure the site stabilized before uh, giving uh, authority to approval to uh, start construction yep. before issuing a building permit. My my guess is it's it's remote enough that it wouldn't be, uh, they don't need the space to construct the dwelling and or the, the septic system. So it, uh, it could be done uh, and completed uh, without interfering in construction, the house construction and, and, and uh, you know, so as a phase one as opposed to a phase 10. Well, or even now I have that on my list of, of other questions um, as to Mr. Van Dyke, if you would be commissioner, um, Christian and I were there this morning reviewing, you know, what we were going to talk about tonight. Um, and it would be helpful if you could put up some kind of barrier at the end of your property line. I know we've had this discussion before. You can't go any further than what the property that you own to either put up hay bales, wattles, a silt fence, immediately um, so that we can mitigate any more erosion going down because now we're getting late in the year. You're probably not going to start working on this depending on weather until maybe in the spring. So if we could get um, something like that done immediately, that would be great. Yeah, we use s and Farms that right down the street and all throughout like the, the area has it. Across the back end of the property, I'm sure that. I just thought Yeah, okay, that would be great. Yeah, that, you could that do that immediately. Stone berm can be put in now, and then below that, I've also got uh, erosion controls going right across the lot, and that can be done now, too. Right, so if that could be done immediately, that would go a long way to controlling that erosion problem. Jo Joyce, you could, you could also authorize the, the roughing in of the detention basin as, as a, a, a first step after the erosion controls are in. Tim, uh, I, I, was, I was even going to recommend the completion of the, of the uh, detention pond. Uh, roughing in, I don't, there's no need to rough it in and put it off. 
Uh, right. it's it really is separate from the construction project. Yep, I, I agree, Mike. So, so if I'm not jumping the gun here, I, I, I'm considering a motion to accept the plan as submitted uh, and phase it in with a, a erosion control at the rearage of the lot, the full width of the lot, and then construction of the detention pond, and then subsequent uh, construction of the home and, and septic system. And I would like to add again, this is another one of the lots that we add the perpetual condition because this has the detention basin on it so that that will follow the same as the other three. No, that actually it goes on the order of conditions, um, and it goes there's there's like standard conditions, then special conditions, and then there's these perpetual conditions. When you get your order of compliance, when everything is all done, it says you've met all of the above, and but this remains. So that verbiage that we talked about with Tim now is just going to continue, and it stays on the deed. So it's nothing that you have to do. It will be on even the order of compliance when it's all done, and then that so somebody sells the property, they're going to do a deed search, they're going to see that because it stays with it. It's part of your order of compliance. Yeah, that certificate of compliance gets uh, recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Yes. Okay. I have one question. So we can do the, the hay bales. I can get that to happen, you know, as soon as Paul gets out there, flags it. We can get that in quickly, you know, within a week or two time. The, uh, the actual construction of the pond, I understand, it would work from the back of the lot forward, essentially, because the, the house is at the front of the lot. We get all the drainage working correctly. If we don't get to that until the spring with the pond. Would that be detrimental to you guys, as long as we have the perimeter already protected with hay bales? I'm just not sure what our schedule is going to be like with machinery and everything before. I don't know I don't see that any I don't I know I, everybody wants to put it at the end and I don't see any reason why it could be uh, first and as much as there's a violation commission's almost overlooking it um, and and uh, well he is talking about doing it first it's just whether or not he does it this fall or in the spring correct mr. Van Dyke oh yeah. Your solution is a temporary right. fix Right, he's for still going to do the temporary, right. and okay. then the next step will be the drainage basin. And with these, I don't hear so well. Very good. Yeah, no, no, not a problem. I just like to see it uh, as, as a priority rather than a secondary issue, instance. Yeah. Um, but you did say, uh, your plan said that you're going to uh, uh, plant it with uh, fescue, just grass. So there's no wetland characteristic and what which what we would like to see we don't want to see the next owner fill it and make their flat lawn or, or whatever some other surface that uh, is not a depression and and you're going to give it an impression of a just a depression by virtue of lawn grass yeah that's okay but uh but that's that's the reason for the perpetual condition yeah. Yeah. so so, so I'd like to delay them no longer. Yes, Joy. No, I might just go ahead, Mike. Michael had a condition, had a motion um, on three. Um, did anyone second? I didn't catch. You did. Brian second. Okay, do we have, was that including the stable, the stable, the phased approach with the erosion best management practices done first? And then the completion of the detention basin. Did that? Leave that yet? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, let's. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Commissioner Bro. Aye. Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Christian. Aye. Commissioner Donnelly. Aye. Commissioner Helene. Aye. Commissioner Jacobs. Aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank our newest commission <laughs> member for uh, expediting this, although 30, 60, 90 days is expediting. Yeah, we got it done. It's behind us. Go ahead, guys. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck, guys.
Okay. First three were already done. And came around. This was this the three? three was okay. most recently discussed. <coughs> Thank you, Michael. Very organized here. Hi, Paul. Thanks again, Joyce. All right. Um, while you're signing, I'm just going to um, let's see. There we go. I'm going to uh, op- under Massachusetts general law chapter. Well, I'm just going to open ride more, and then we'll make a motion to continue it to next month. I'd suggest just just a, con- a motion to continue because there's no one here for that. Um, okay. Just... Can I have a motion to continue? So moved. And second. A second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Commissioner Bro. Aye. Commissioner Baker? Aye. Commissioner Christian? Aye. Commissioner Donnelly? Aye. Commissioner Helene? Aye. Commissioner Jacobs? Aye. Motion passes. Just so you folks know, remember this is McCarty Engineering taking over for um, Alton Stone, so they have a little bit of catch up to do, and I know they're short handed on engineers like everyone is. Um, one was down with COVID, one was on <laughs> vacation, so just ask for another month's worth of time. All right. Now we can uh, move on to other business. <laughs> this is, let's start with Woodland Estates. And I saw Mary, um, sorry, Mary Ann DePinto. It's name and you're not muted, I believe. Uh, and Joanne. Poor Mark always has to recuse himself. So Back up. Hello. Several times. All right, let me get. Who do we have? Uh, Marion DePinto, the oh. scientist, and um, Joanne, the um, owner of the park. Uh, can you folks hear me? I'm you having can. some trouble with my screen. Hi, Marianne. Oh, we can hear you. We can oh, hear you. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Let me call up um, what you had sent over this afternoon. Okay, thank you. Ah, Whatever under you other. Uh, I think I might see now. Woodland. Hmm. Let's see, what was the latest one? Ah, that was just yesterday. That must be the latest. So, for some reason or another, I've got post attendee Zoom on my screen and I can't see anything, but at least I could hear you. Oh, minimize it. I see that uh, too on mine. You just, I don't think that'll oh. kick you out. But anyway, I have your What's letter of, of hmm. October 31st on the screen. Um, okay. Marianne. <clears throat> I could speak to a little bit of the history of my involvement. Um, I was contacted a couple, couple, two or three months ago about the replication area at Woodland Estates. Um, and we took a closer look at where it made the best sense to place it and where it would be most likely to work. And it was a flatter area just on the other side of the stream. And fortunately with the drought, there was no flow in the stream and it's very rocky. So. There's no impact to the stream in the process of getting across it um, and pulling that forward or uh, you know, crossing the stream channel essentially on the rocks. Um, the, the area was excavated. Uh, first of all, the uh, erosion controls were installed um, around the replication here, but I had them remove a section of them on the upland side of it above the stream and put those erosion controls across the stream in the event there was any wash out so it wouldn't continue downstream. Um, at that point, the uh, replication area was excavated, very rocky area, but that's also what was crossed. So the, the underlying rocks are there still. There are depressions, so it's a kind of pit and mound topography within that replication area. Um, so there'll be places, once the hay bales are removed, the stream will when it overflows, will overflow into that area. So I planted, well, um, once it was dug out and we cut it to 
took a look at at the uh, its uh, adjacency to the stream, how you know, and its elevation to the in comparison to the stream, that um, we determined it was time to plant it. I uh, spread wetland uh, wildflower and shrub mix over the area. And then, of course, the leaves came down. And this particular mix requires sunlight, and it needs to overwinter. It needs to be cold stratified. Uh, so what I'm recommending is that the leaves get raked off just prior to, the, to warming up in April or so um, to allow the sunlight in. Uh, then I went and took cuttings of silky dogwood, uh, elderberry, and I happened to run across some pussy willow and got one of those. And I put, you put them in a bucket for four or five days, and they, they, uh, they don't really develop roots at that point, but they start to uh, produce roots in a way. You know, they, they begin to function that way. Then you bury those, they call live stakes. They're about eight to 12 inches long. And I used rebar and hammered the rebar into the soil so that I was able to get down far enough and able to sink the live stakes in. I've had good luck with them in the past that the elderberry will start sprouting leaves come spring uh, as, well, as well the dogwood. And I hear that uh, the pussy willow will root anywhere that you stick it, but uh, we'll see what happens with that. And I planted more than what I had proposed in, in my original proposal back a couple of months ago. I think I had seven silky dogwoods and I planted nine. Just, just in case, a couple of them might fail. Uh, I kind of randomly spread them throughout the area. And we'll see what happens come springtime. If there's, if the seed mix doesn't take for some reason, we'll have to reseed um, and keep an eye on those uh, live stakes to see that they do take root. And there was a, uh, an existing high bush blueberry that we left in that replication area. Irish blueberry. All right, thank you, Marianne. I appreciate, uh, the commission appreciates the work you're doing. Thank Did you very much. Do we need anything else after that? It was just well, an update. One question for uh, Marianne. When would you, th how long do you think it would take for um, vegetation to be fully established there? Two seasons, growing seasons? I, I would go with the two growing seasons just to give me a chance to take a good look at it by June, July, I'll know whether or not it's going to take. And I've had, it depends upon the, the drought we're having right now too, whether or not some water, the, the groundwater comes back up enough. Um, so we'll keep an eye on it. It could be conceivably by the end of next growing season be well established. I've had that happen uh, in other places. Uh, we'll have to see. Commissioner Re Donnelly? Yeah, respectfully request that we get uh, an update uh, at the earliest in April, at the latest in May, on the second stage of uh, that seed uh, planting and, and uh, germination requirement. Yeah, I, okay, I would expect in May that I would see those, the, the, there ought to be visible seedlings coming up, probably by the end of May. Well, you, you'll have missed 30 days if it requires clearing the, 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 the leafy litter off, yep. you'll have missed 30 days. So we want to make sure oh, that we're okay. on it yes. at, uh, I'm sorry. at the yes. earliest clearing. April, at the latest May? Yes. So that, that's not, not, not necessarily for uh, success of germination uh, to right. see it, but so that it happens. Yes, yep. and, definitely by early, by by the second week of April, I would say the leaves should be raked away. And and while I have you, this is it's it's not significant to your project, but it's significant to uh, uh, reclaiming areas or, or, or planting. Yes. The uh, we had a drought this year, and and the uh, the wetland seed mix that was used at the Fitchburg Airport was fantastic. Oh, and good. they didn't have any more water than the rest of us at home or, or out there at, uh, at, the, at the trail park. Um, so my, my question to you is, uh, I recognize the expense involved in the seed versus the larger plants. It was explained to me when we were out there. But um, 
everything, anything, whether it be uh, uh, invasives, if, if we planted heavy, heavy, heavy seed mix on all of our replication areas to crowd out and or over compete with invasives or other undesirable plants, is that a good idea? And that's hmm. an opinion that I w would like you to share with me. Hmm. Uh, I think you could heavily seed with wetlands plants. They would compete with one another uh, in that seed mix. Uh, I don't think that would be harmful, but it's, I would have to talk to the nursery that I get the uh, seed mix from. Uh, but that's, that would be my opinion. There's quite a history of failed replication areas with blueberry bushes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you said pussy willows uh, in drought conditions, not so, not so successful. But uh, I've got to say that while I was out there, I was in muck, and I was I was in really moist soil. So I, I, I know that the water tables come back up yeah. enough for this replication area. Um, I've, I've done maybe 10 replication areas now, and I have not had one fail, but it requires constant monitoring. I go back to the ones I've done five years ago just to see what they're doing um, and to learn from it, so. Thanks again. You're welcome. Any other commissioners have comment? Mr. Smith? Commissioner Helene? I'm all set, thank you. Okay. Commissioner Helene? I'm all set, Bill. Okay. Thank you very much, Marianne. Can we, can we extend right. that invitation? Thank you, everyone. Go ahead. You're welcome. Take care. Have a good evening. What did you want to make a motion on that? Uh, I, I, yeah, I would like to. Okay. Uh, uh, I would like okay, to, then. Uh, a revisit uh, at the earliest in April, at the latest in May meeting. Okay. I'll second that. I think it's a good checkpoint yeah, on the timeline of things. All right then, um, thank you. Let's call the roll. We have a motion on the table. Uh, Commissioner Bro. Aye. Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Chris, oh, Commissioner Christian has recused himself. Commissioner Donnelly. Aye. Commissioner Helene. Aye. Commissioner Jacobs. Aye. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the spring, Marianne. Good night. You're welcome. Good night. Thanks, Marianne. Thanks, Marianne. You're welcome. Madam Chair, while we're still on Woodland Estates, were we not supposed to get also information on the detention pond and that one of the conditions was to, there was a culvert that was supposed to be built that they were also supposed to report on in October or November? Mike, have you heard from them? Um, I, I kind of expected Jamie Rowe would be here. Um, Joanne McGurn is still on. The, the, the culvert definitely was put in. We know that for sure. That, has, that was done years and years ago now. Um, I'm sorry, the other... Well, I, I just, that was choice. part of, that was one of the conditions that said that, so if that was the case, it said that the four by six culvert shown on the site plan um, had to be installed. So, if, then, so then that has been done. And they were supposed to report on it the same thing back in October and November. No mention of that. Doesn't say in the order of conditions that, you know, yeah. Just the culvert. So if that's let, in, let me just time. ask uh, Jamie for a report, and maybe we can send it around in, independently. Okay, not wait for the next meeting. Okay. Mike, I, I thought I saw something from Jamie saying that he couldn't make it tonight, and that he could be at the next meeting. Oh, okay. Um, Thanks for reminding. Um, yeah, he says, uh, as I stated in my earlier email, I'm out of town 11 2 to 11 4 and cannot attend the 11 2 concom meeting. Oh, okay. Thanks. I yep. must have forgot about that or missed that entirely, Tim. Gotcha. Jo Joyce was reading from the order of conditions issued three, six, nine years ago. Um, uh, since that time, we in invited the applicant to join us uh, in November. Um, uh, but we gave them a timeline. Mm -hmm. We did, we did, Mike, and, and we, we, in addition to the do, 
and they filed a new notice of intent. In addition to doing their replication area, they also need to uh, follow up and complete the detention basin. Okay, so the culvert has installed. Is the detention basin complete? That's the question. Is Ms. Hamburg here? Is she still on the line? She was. I don't see her name there anymore. Okay. I think after Miriam uh, okay. left. I don't think it's finalized. Um, last time I took a spin up around there mm -hmm. a few days ago. I don't think that, that there's not vegetation around the basin. Okay. And you won't get it now. Um, again, uh, I thought 30 days was sufficient. We gave him 90. Um, and we were looking for not just a report, but a completed wetland and replication area. And, and, and as much as it's not completed in that 90 day period, what's the pleasure of the CONCOM? There's one disgruntled butter. Mm -hmm. So if he couldn't be here tonight, can we ask him to, if he can report on that, can he be at the next meeting? I think we could hold, I mean, we could have a special meeting for that. Uh, you know, within 48 hours of, uh, you know, so we can post it. Well, well, let's do this. Like I had mentioned, let me d just ask Jamie, um, send him an email tomorrow. He'll see it when he gets back from vacation. Just submit a report of the status of the D Basin. And um, we don't need to wait until the December 7th meeting to circulate that around to um, all the commissioners. And if you want to hold a special meeting, let me know. We'll post it. I guess what I'm, I'm not necessarily looking for the status. I'm looking for a completion. Um, they were issued an order of condition, given 90 days to complete it. It was accepted, signed, accepted by the applicant. We're looking for a, a sign off, or, or, or we'd hold sign off until it was functioning. But uh, I, I guess it should be completed. And. Um, Sufficient time has elapsed to have it completed. Uh, Jamie can report on it, and I invite him to do so. But does it disgruntle the butter? Justifiably so. Well, and this appears that, uh, you know, it doesn't have a date on it, but I think, I mean, this is the latest order of conditions that was issued this year mm -hmm. in 2022. And, and that's why the deadline is here, and he's supposed to be reporting. So, just reporting. And, and have it done. Well, we voted on completion. That it's done. We voted on completion, and we were going to be informed tonight that the work was done. Right. Okay. So, so if it's not, they're in violation. Commissioner have... Helene. Sorry about that. So if we gave them a time frame to have it done. And they haven't, then we should move forward with the order of conditions that we've now created, and or not the order of conditions, our protocol that Mike created. And yeah, there would be a violation. And I mean, they could have asked for an extension as well from us, but we have not received much communication, which is typical of this site. So yeah, I think that they should be held accountable for that. I'm not insensitive to the engineer not being able to present, re represent himself tonight. I understand that. That's all well and good. Conservation Commission can act or do nothing. We have a, a history of doing nothing. Uh, we have a protocol. If you want to follow the protocol, fine. If you don't want to follow the protocol, that's fine too. I agree with Commissioner Helene. I, this is this um, order of condition in the new, this was dated um, 8 9 22. So it, this is not, you know. The 10 years ago order of conditions. This is new. He knew that they were supposed to be done and report back. And I, I understand if he's not here, then Ms. Hamburg should have been able to reply. Somebody was asked to reply, this, let us know what the status is. And they didn't do that. So they violated the order of conditions. Right. And they have a history of violating order of conditions. So, exactly. yeah, I think we should absolutely. Let them know. I mean, we can't be any more clear with with that these folks. And then, you know, 
but it's one thing after another. So, yes, I think we should pursue it. And so uh, our protocol would now be to issue, a, reissue a violation notice. They did not, um, they did not uphold our order of conditions. And with that, a fine, I, I believe that would be the, a step that we're on at this point. Well, history motion was made and seconded on the meeting of July 6, 2022. Uh, restore the wetland two to one ratio, existing wetland replication plan, work to be completed. I had 30 days, it was amended to 90 days. Replication to be monitored for two years and maintained, repaired, replaced as needed. Uh, two year monitoring provision restarts at each repair or replacement. Complete the tension and retention pond reference existing project plan, work to be completed in 60 days. It was all to, uh, amended to 90 days. Uh, pond to be monitored for two years and maintained, repaired, replaced as needed, and two year monitoring provision restarts at each repair or replacement. Uh, the motion was made, I believe it was seconded. We adopted it. Um, there you are. Um, we have a protocol of, uh, for, for a uh, violation notice. Uh, our agent was to uh, Go to the site, issue a, 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 a fine, and report to the next meeting. Pretty simple. Let's do it. No problem. And they won't. They understand it. Let's do it. Do we have a motion? Can we have a motion? Can we have a motion? You know where I stand. Do you want to make the motion? I'm, no, I'm looking for someone. I, I'm Commissioner Helene. So I'll motion to now issue the violation. A new violation for them not having followed our um, the order of conditions. Again, I, I recognize an inability of an engineer to be here. That's not my my, my issue. Well, my issue is that issue. an incomplete det uh, detention point. Hey, hey, Mike, if 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 I can just. Uh, speak a little bit to that. So there, there is some urgency to it in that um, the area that was not completed is the kind of the, the down gradient wall of the detention basin. So um, if water flows into that basin, there's nothing to hold that water back and, and, prevent, and conceivably you could have some erosion into the um, adjacent nearby stream. So there is some urgency into uh, getting that work completed. Now he tells us. <laughs> um, no, anyway. no, you're right. That, that, and that's why we had, that's why the commission voted for the 90 yeah. days. Okay. Okay. So, so that, it, it, pretty simple. I think we, they, they simply issue a violation notice, uh, invite them to the next meeting, uh, demand that they be here at the next meeting. Um, and the clock is ticking. Okay. And we're looking for completion in the next 30 days because we didn't have it in the first 90 days. Violation with a fine, as Commissioner Helene yes. had indicated. Yep. Do we have a second? I second that. I'll call the roll. Commissioner Bro. Aye. Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Christian. Oh, he's recused himself, sorry. Commissioner Donnelly. Aye. Commissioner Helene. Aye. Commissioner Jacobs. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, anything further? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Barrett, I'm going to go grab uh, Mark Christian, but you can get yourself settled in. We have Attorney Barrett here for the Mad River Solar Site um, on Ashburnham Street update. Go thank, ahead, Mr. Barrett, thank you. welcome. Good, good, good evening, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners and uh, Mr. Hara, Mr. Smith. I believe uh, Tom DeNuvel is uh, online, I think. Yep. 
and uh, also um, online should be Arthur Allen. Uh, I, I'd uh, like to, um, I think you all know Mr. Denouville, he's the proponent of the project here up in Ashburnham Street. And we have Arthur Allen with us tonight. Um, he is our, our wetland scientist uh, who the, Mr. Denouville has hired. And uh, he was able to review the order of conditions which uh, we received about three weeks ago. And he had some re requests that we make uh, to modify the order of conditions because as you, all, all of you know, we, we met on this about uh, five, six months ago uh, and uh, we had a plan. Uh, unfortunately, there was a, a delay in things and um, we are in the cusp of trying to complete the work by the end of November, I think in the original plan, but I think Mr. Uh, Allen had suggested that we are gonna need more time in order to uh, do this. Um, we have taken some steps. Uh, I, I recently met with the neighbors with a uh, tree service uh, about taking down the dangerous trees uh, there. And, um, uh, and again, we've hired Mr. Allen. So I, I think if I could, I'd like to introduce Mr. Allen uh, to go over his uh, Letter. He is uh, vice president of, of Echo Tech in Worcester, and uh, if he, he did with his letter copy his CV, which I think uh, evidences his credentials in this area. Uh, Arthur, you're, can you? Uh, yeah, you're, you're not muted, Arthur. Yep. I'm here, Arthur Allen from Echo Tech. I'm under contract uh, to monitor the wetland restoration. As, uh, as noted, I'm familiarized myself with the order of conditions, particularly the special conditions pertaining to restoration and with the uh, ERM plan that was prepared for the restoration. Um, I submitted, dated today, November 2nd, a, a proposed restoration schedule. <clears throat> that schedule includes my contact information, mobile number, email address, and as noted, a copy of my qualifications as a wetland and soil scientist. Um, basically, at this point, um, I'm pro what we're proposing is uh, this week, um, week of November 1st, there's ongoing reflagging and staking of the uh, approved wetland resource area boundaries and buffer limits, um, the uh, swamp matting, erosion control. Uh, barriers, seed mixes, and mulch is being procured this week in preparation. And uh, the contractor, John Alward Corp, local contractor, um, has been retained to, to do the actual work to be monitored um, by me. He's proposing three to four weeks. So basically from, I said, from November 7th to December Second, and that of course will be weather dependent because as you all know, um, we occasionally have big snowstorms in, in late October and November. But again, if the weather holds, um, we're proposing to have uh, you know, the bulk of that work done um, by December 2nd. That would include uh, placement of sufficient control barriers, removal of excess woody debris from the wetland resource areas and buffers, regrading or smoothing of ruts and mounds in those areas, seeding with the native seed mixes and mulching all the seeded disturbed areas, weed-free straw. Again, temporary construction matting will be used as necessary to prevent soil disturbance while that work is going on. Um, I also propose to provide on-site inspections at a minimum of once per week and after any 24-hour rain event resulting in a quarter inch of rain or more, and I'll provide photo documented reports of the restoration work on a quarterly basis until the site's been deemed uh, restored. The only other comment I had um, um, is that I, in reviewing the order of conditions, I noted that it had the only date on the order was the date that the notice of intent was filed. I did not see a, a date that the hearing was closed, an issuance date, or a date on the signature of the commissioners. So um, just I just had recommended to my client that before that order gets 
recorded that those apparent Scribner's errors in the order should be corrected. Um, that way we'd be able to establish uh, an expiration date for the order and reconcile it with the other uh, required um, time frames within the order. So that, that's all I have at this point. Thank you. Okay. You know, if, I, if I could follow up, uh, authors, uh, you know, we, we got the uh, special conditions, I mean the order of conditions, and I was uh, poised to uh, record it, uh, but Arthur had uh, quickly reviewed it, and he suggested that we bring up the point of, uh, um, I guess, uh, revising or amending the order of conditions before it does get recorded, since it was so close to your meeting tonight, we thought it made sense to bring that to, to you as far as getting the new, the dates that he mentioned and uh, I think uh, uh, our request to, to modify the schedule uh, as Arthur has described. Um, and it would seem to make more sense to record just the one order of conditions with the, the, a corrected schedule if we could. Mm, okay. <laughs> so John, let me, let me ask, do, do you have, I guess, if, do you know exactly what needs to be corrected so we can, um, we can do, do the fix? Yes, I, I think, quite frankly, Mike, it's it's just um, uh, on the. Uh, I'll try to find the page here. Um, where is it? Um, yeah, on on the pa second page of the order. Um, uh, paragraph seven, it has the date, date with the notice of the intent was filed, the date the public hearing was closed, and the date of issuance. Um, the, just to fill those in. Okay. And I think in the special conditions, the time frame was that uh, I think the work would be completed by November, the restoration work would be completed by November 30th. Uh, and um, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Arthur, that uh, we're looking to extend that um, to, uh, to December 2nd? Yeah, and again, that's weather dependent, given that we're just uh, getting started now. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be close, assuming we, the weather cooperates we're gonna be real close to that required date. I mean, the, the order, special conditions also require that it be started in the spring of 2022, mm -hmm. and obviously um, that did not happen. So, um, you know, whether that needs to be corrected or, if, I mean, at, at this point, if the commission was just to, you know, review and vote to approve this the schedule, then, then that would be in the record, and that might be sufficient along with just you know, the, the Scribner's errors on the order. I, I think that may be sufficient, but I'll defer to the commission on that. I guess I would just pause it. Since we, we are getting a, a later start, uh, whether or not we, we need more time to be on the safe side than December 2nd. Um, and uh, I guess I would uh, ask the Commission to consider extending that. I, I'm not sure how much work can be done beyond, you know, this period of time, December, December 15th, or something like that. Um, obviously, uh, there are considerations there about going onto the property and and uh, doing work. Uh, even uh, in terms of the tree cutting, um, I, I think a number of the trees uh, can be can actually just be dropped by uh, uh, the tree service. But there are some other trees that are near the neighbor's property that might require heavier equipment uh, to go in. And um, I'm not sure if that they would want to do that until the ground's frozen. So that type of work might take longer. Commissioner Donnelly. Yeah. Um, I just want to read two paragraphs. Um, April 3rd, 2022, draft uh, amended order of conditions. Uh, one of the findings was that uh, the 48 acre site was cleared. Resource areas impacted by the logging included bordering vegetated wetlands, 
100-foot buffer zones and the 200-foot riverfront area abutting an unnamed tributary to Phillips Brook on the eastern side of the site. Logging activities also occurred within the 125 no disturbance residential buffer along the southern and the east of property boundary. These activities and alterations were not authorized by the order of condition um, and not consistent with the intent of the Forest Cutting Practices Act. Those were the findings. Uh, on uh, April 3rd, we issued the amended order. Uh, number three on the special conditions was, a schedule of the restoration shall be provided by the applicant. Restoration activities shall commence in the spring of 2022 and be substantially complete before November 30, 2022. The commission shall consider issuing an enforcement order and fines if it finds a good faith effort was not made to complete the restoration during the 2022 growing season. <clears throat> April and November 2nd or 3rd is eight months have transpired between the order and now. So I would ask the representative, can you tell the commission, let's see, uh, commence in the spring, of the, oh yeah, can you tell me if a good faith effort was made to comply with the order of conditions? Well, Mr. Donnelly, I, I would have to say yes, because the order of conditions did not actually issue until October 14th. And Michael, I thought I thought this was this was done um, quite some time ago. And until Attorney Barrett pointed out to me that hey, we still haven't received it, um, then we kind of hurried up and and you know did the paperwork and mailed it to him. Actually, he picked it up in person. Right. So, so I think not any fault of the applicant or Attorney Barrett. It's just well, one of those things. Case for his mistake. How do you like that? Well, uh, we're doing what we can, Mr. Donnelly. Um, and in light of this glitch, I would ask that the commission consider that I think, in fact, what Mr. Uh, Allen is suggesting is that we can largely get this work done in a short period of time. And the, the uh, work is being begun as we speak, but I think in all fairness to Mr. DeNovo and, and to our, our efforts that asking for a little bit of an extension, and we're asking it for the deadline, uh, is not unreasonable. Well, you're only asking for two days, I get that. November 30th, December 2nd, I, I, I find that odd, but uh, you, you want me to roll over? Is that what you want? I don't think we're asking anyone to roll, roll over, Mr. Donnelly. I mean, there is a, a snafu here. We're trying to rectify the situation. We're trying to get the work done. We're appearing tonight before you because realistically, uh, we wanted to address this. And we've got Mr. Allen uh, on board, so um, I don't see why. On April 3rd, who represented you here at the meeting? Were you the representative? I, yes, okay. yes. So verbally, this was exchanged. And some element of note-taking may have transpired, but you didn't have a hard copy until October of this year. Right. Okay, I get it. I mean, not a signed copy. You know, I mean, we knew generally what the terms were, but I don't think that the, the, the fact that we have not acted on a proposed order of condition is is something that we should be faulted for. I mean, you, you generally have to get the order in order to start doing the work. How, how do we know whether or not it, someone would have appealed it or something? That's not my problem. Well, Chris, I think Tom um, Denouville had his hand up. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mr. Denouville. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I would just like to mention that we have. Um, been asking for the completed order of conditions for for some time, um, and I think that, uh, as Attorney Barrett mentioned, 
we weren't sure if the order of conditions would the final order would would change materially from the draft order and so it seemed logical to us to make sure that we knew what we were doing before we started the project and so uh, as time has gone by we've gotten more and more concerned about being able to get it done on time um, but as we get, get as we're getting closer to this deadline here we've gotten the resources put together we have the contractor you know on contract we have the wetland scientist on contract we have you know flagging ready to start so notwithstanding the fact that we we just received this we are making i would say as best efforts as you could to get the get the uh get these uh these things lined up so that we could um we'd like to get this completed it, you know that we're not delaying here um because it, it does us any good we want this project to move forward so we just didn't want to be in a position where we didn't do the right thing and i think that the order of conditions specifically asks that we uh move forward based on the, the issued order so yeah you know, we we've been in we've been a little bit tied up here in terms of moving forward with what we've been asked to do and if if i might madam chair i you know i think mr donnelly's point is is well taken uh, you know i mean I, I hear what he's saying you know if there's a good faith effort was made to complete um you know maybe uh we should have done something else you know in in terms of uh trying to to bring this matter forward but i th i think i'm at this point asking that the the commission uh uh allow us to go forward to possibly amend the the order of conditions uh with the new schedule and uh bearing in mind that if we are not uh going forward we will be uh possibly sanctioned if, if we do not get this done. Just to be clear, Mr. Barry, you're asking for a two-day extension? Well, I, I'd like to clarify that with Mr. Mr. Allen. Arthur, uh, is, is that sufficient, I mean, to, to get this work done? Again, as, assuming that the, the conditions, you know, permit that, I mean, we're clearly in a, you know, a very conducive period right now with this Indian summer we're in. And I mean, I, you know, but there's no guarantee this will continue. I, you know, obviously, if we had started earlier in the fall, it would be a different situation, but we we didn't. And so, you know, that that's our best that's our best estimate based on current conditions, manpower, materials. Um, you know, again, I, I mean, I would just respectfully request that the commission accepts, you know, my proposed schedule of work, and it clearly says, you know, weather dependent, um, but we're going to make our best effort at it. I, uh, Commissioner Christian. I find it hard to believe that any effort in good faith. Uh, can I ask when you hired this new company, Echotech? Uh, Mr. Allen? Yeah. For, for the wetland scientist? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Tom, you know, it's, it's yeah, recent. Absolutely. It's fairly yeah. recent. No, no. I, I, yeah, very recently. We, we, we have been waiting for the order of conditions to move forward, and we've been requesting uh, that we receive them. And, and for, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to. So when did you hire Mr. Allen? October 28th. Yeah. As okay, well as, so you knew I, in I, April, didn't hire you know, Mr. I, Allen to October, and I, but, but at, I at face value, I have sympathy Hold on, that the city's failure to act, again, you didn't get the notice till mid-October, but you, did, you cannot stand in front of me and say you made good effort from April to hiring him in October. So the, the push is at the tail end. You showed no interest in satisfying that neighborhood of people from April to October. We are well, prepared. To, you weren't to, chomping to, at the to, bit to help. We Human nature says actually, you, you actually react. Are. 
you respond uh, actually, to a push. And they were we never given a push. Okay, one at a time, folks. I'm sorry. Let's, so, so we've not got. Def I'm not defending you, but a am I alone in, in, in my disappointment? And the greatest disappointment is getting that notice on October 3rd. Yes. And here I am being a dick because they got a notice on October 3rd, and I'm going to make them pay. Why should they have to pay? April 3rd, October, my God, what a dysfunctional body. I agree. And I'm part of it. So once again, just to be clear, you're asking for us to amend the order of condition to December 2nd per Mr. Allen's schedule. So you need a two-day extension. You can get yes. jumping on this work. You're ready to go on this work. The, the only caveat, Madam Chair, is, is, is as Mr. Allen said, the, the weather. You know, he thinks if, if the current conditions, this, this work can be done by December 2nd. I, I might suggest even, uh, I think I quickly looked at my calendar as far as when the board is, the commission is meeting next, and I think it is December 7th. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I hope is not a day in, of infamy, but um, I would suggest that if you gave us to that date, we would be here to report on what has been accomplished and uh, and whether, God forbid, uh, uh, I, I, I certainly fully appreciate the, the board's consternation, but um, if we did have serious weather problems that prevented things at that time, we would be uh, apologetically asking for more time, but hopefully it won't come to that. Okay, well, it's so going to be fine. Motion to extend. Second. Second. Okay. Um, we're going to call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Bro is he's left. Uh, Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Christian. Aye. Commissioner Donnelly. Aye. Commissioner Serafiel. Oh, Commissioner Helene. We still have Mayor. Aye. Thank you. Um, and Commissioner Jacobs has recused herself, so the motion passes. We'll see you, Mr. Barrett, at the December 7 meeting, and we um, encourage Mr. Allen to get to work. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chair. Well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Where's Joyce? Where's come oh, there she is. Okay, come on back in, Joyce. Um, moving on. If I, if I might. Well, I, I probably shouldn't. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. I just Chair. want to say that we did meet with the neighbors uh, with the trees, and uh, Ms. Jacobs was uh, was there, and hopefully we can get that work done soon. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mayor. Hope so. She okay. requested a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we have uh, violation and enforcement orders. Um, 291 Westminster Street, Roy Salter. But it was put on actually at Joyce's request just to. Okay, yes. Joyce, before you get started, I just wanted on the record that um, at no time should any member of the public um, be disrespectful to a commissioner in any way, shape, or form. And um, that's completely unacceptable behavior. And I want to start by saying that right now. Go ahead, Joyce. Okay. Um, I asked for this to be put on the agenda. However, um, in the enforcement order that was issued um, to 291 Westminster Street, they were required to come to this next meeting, and they're not here. And we haven't heard from anybody since the work's all done now. Um, where do we stand with this? Have you heard from them, Mike? I heard from, well, Roy Salter came down. All right, let's back up. It was a Saturday morning, right? Um, several weeks ago yeah. when, when this was noticed. Um, Monday afternoon, the building commissioner and a local ins one of his local inspectors and myself went to the site uh, and told Roy, you know, you got to, well, handed him the violation notice, the enforcement order. Um, 
He came back to the office, filed for a building permit with the building department, and uh, we told him, said he would be at this meeting. Uh, Jamie Rowe from Whitman Bingham called me a couple of days later um, saying that he expected to be here as well. In the meantime, you know, we get a note that Jamie's on vacation this week. So Jamie was out. He still expected Roy to be here because he was aware of this meeting. Exactly. Item C in this order of enforcement says, property owner shall take action. The bridge should not be left um, unsafe condition, but cease work and attend the next commission meeting, which is Wednesday, November 6th at 6 p.m. It's blatant on the enforcement order and we just get blown off again. So uh, I, I, as Commissioner Helene pointed out with one of the other violations, I mean, it, we need to start issuing violations and tickets immediately because nobody, they're not taking this seriously. Do you have a motion, Joyce? I do. So um, regarding 291 Westminster Street, um, I motion that we should reissue the enforcement order um, requiring that they contact Mr. O'Hara in 10, 10 days from receipt of or from issuing of the enforcement order in a timely manner and that they have to appear before the December meeting now, but this is also a violation that's not addressed and we issue a fine, the $300 fine. And do we have a second? Could we have oh. some discussion on the motion? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Helene? Mike, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was going to second it. So Thank you. Just Commissioner Donnelly. July 6th, 2022, enforcement protocol. Motion made and handled. A site visit by the agent, a determination if a violation existed. Verbal notice optional, written notice required. Begs the question was the written notice? Issued. State the violation and issue a directive, cease and desist, attend the next meeting, and file the appropriate document. Conscom issues finding of minor or major violation after discussion. Violator files appropriate RDA NOI. Any violation that is determined to be major shall be issued a violation notice and assessed a fine of $300. Subsequent violations, including failure to pay fine and corrective action, shall be handed in one of two manners, remand the violation to DEP, assess a fine of 300. We had some massaging there. I thought we were in agreement. Uh, he should have a $300 fine in hand for violation. Second violation is failure to attend tonight, should be a subsequent $300 fine. He has two strikes against them. We were counseled that DEP is looking for three strikes before they take over. We have to, we have to do due diligence before we can expect any relief from DEP. So I would ask the tenants, and I might add that uh, the history of that site is that the owner will not be showing up. Um, well, I don't know if you're like aware of that. Um, they will not be coming to a meeting. Um, that was the last, uh, they were ordered, not ordered, excuse me, they were advised to clear the vegetation at the dam and at the on the advice of the state, they went and did it without local order of conditions. And, and it was at that meeting that we were told, don't expect him, uh, he won't be here, all well and good. Further, I had a fine chat with the contractor on site and everything was fine. It was his statement to me that they'll let the chips fall where they may, that they'll do Whatever the Conservation Commission decides, they'll, they'll go with the flow. They're going to get the work done and then uh, handle whatever response we have. So it should be an easy motion to accept, to amend, to increase, or whatever. Well, it sounds like it should be amended to be $600 because according to what you just said, there's been already been two violations. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Bear in mind that it was 
shared with me that that's the expectation of the violator. Right. Well, it sounds to me, Mike, if I may interject, yes. that their business philosophy is we've got to get this done right now because we're on a one-week shutdown. We can't bother to ask permission. We're just going to ask forgiveness and let the chips fall where they may. So they're going to pay us $600. It, it's that simple. And yeah. they accept it out of his mouth, the contractor. They as much as said, that's what they accept. So we could make a 1300 see if they accept that. <laughs> um, and then one more thing. Um, an engineer approved that bridge. And you don't get an engineer overnight. So the, the time element for filing with CONSCOM is a non-issue. They purposefully ignored to file, uh, neglected yes. to file. Yeah. Commissioner Donnelly, from what you just said, it sounds like there's a second violation where work was done on the dam without us being notified. Um, that was uh, history. Uh, and, um, okay. Oh, okay. And, and okay. Not today. They get, they okay. Get a, not that they got away with it. Okay. Uh, they had a bit of oversight on the state. Okay. The state superseded our, our, our uh, local control or did okay. it. I'm not going to go there. We have a motion on the table in a second. And um, this is... And a uh, motion to amend... To change it to 600. Two violations. Yes, violations. yes. We have a $600 fine. Um, do you have all that, Michael? Yes. Can I, I'm going to call the roll. Commissioner Baker? Aye. Commissioner Christian? Aye. Commissioner Donnelly? Aye. Commissioner Helene? Aye. Commissioner Jacobs? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. And, um, Mike, did we, did the commission ever get put on, you know, that software that the city has that you, so, I mean, are we on that yet that no one can get a permit if they have, like, they can go get their building permit with an outstanding major violation? The building permits aren't, aren't my peer view, purview. Right. But are we on the software yet? Yeah, we have yeah. been for, well. But can it move forward I, if there is a violation with us? I think it's two separate issues. I mean, the issue that the building commissioner saw was that, all right, work is progressing here. Better just to, and I'm kind of, you know, speaking for, for Mark now, better just to get the work done and, and, you know, and get the bridge safe so that, A, the business on the other side can get to the, can get to the business, and B, if the fire department ever needed to get there, because they have never... As far as I've been told by fire prevention. I believe we had orders not to cross that bridge for 30 years. So we weren't going to that warehouse. Right. Wow. And yet well, you have lucky power. never a fire. <laughs> what kind of insurance does that warehouse have? It's just one more thing that swept under the carpet. Okay. But we had, we were not to cross that bridge. Okay. So the bridge is fixed. There's still a violation that they know about, and they're going to pay the $600 fine, and that's the... That was six. Uh, that, that, that passed, right? Six. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like, actually, it's, it's a good thing it got fixed. Let's move on to... Uh, thank you. Let's move on to 46 Sheldon Road. We're almost through this. Okay. 46 Sheldon Road, Adams R&R, LLC. Um... Do we have uh, an update from the uh, violation enforcement orders? I, before Joyce starts, and I'll call up your um, letter on the screen, and, um, but I did get from Dean DeShane, the um, realtor, uh, contact information for um, the attorney, uh, Attorney Baldessari, left, left a voicemail. The first time, I, I, the voicemail box was full. Second time, there was room. So I know he's at least checking. Um, and I know Paul Grazowitz um, was reaching out to, um, to the owner. And um, I strongly suggested to Attorney Baldazer that he make an appearance here. Um, but I didn't see the name at all. So listed on the uh, attendees. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to where Joyce. 
Madam Chair, you're welcome. I can, we can update. Please go the, ahead. Yes, the thank you. Members. Um, 46 Sheldon Road, which is now the remainder um, of what is left of the lot violation. Um, Commissioner Darling and I had an opportunity to meet with DEP. After last month's meeting, we were, we were trying to determine what was our standing still with that lot. Um, that, because the fill remains in place in the wetland area, it's considered a continuing violation. So every day that that fill remains in place, it's a violation and we still have standing every day. That being said, DEP suggested that we issue an order of condition, uh, not an order of condition, I'm sorry, an enforcement order um, of which based on their requirements, I drafted, which I sent to everyone last night for their um, input. They want us to be very specific about what we want them to do, such as here's the, um, here's the violation. I referenced uh, Mr. Smith's violation that he has detailed out many times for us, um, that he needs to contact our agent, Mr. O'Hara, within 10 days of issuing of the order, he needs to be at our next meeting and that um, that be issued immediately. I don't know if anyone has had a chance to review the packet that I sent um, last night. And if you have any questions, basically it's it's the basic enforcement order: cease and desist. Don't do any, you know, don't do anything else. Um, you need to contact us. The site needs to be restored completely. They need to present a restoration plan by January first. We have to give them some time to do that, so that has to be done by January first. Um, and the um, alterations of the area need to be completely restored. So now going forward, this is just the first step. In order to, because Mr. Adams, even though Mr. O'Hara now has uh, possibly another contact point, he also still seems to ignore us every time we do anything. Doesn't, won't accept certified mail, doesn't contact anybody, but it doesn't matter. So three strikes and DEP considers that that's the end of the ball game and should we turn this then over to them, we have done our due diligence of trying to enforce the act ourselves and he is not responding to us where then DEP can take over, they have lawyers, they have a lot more backing, they have a lot more standing. So the plan will be, we've already with some of the notices that Mike has sent out, that step one, this enforcement order will be step two. And in 10 days when he doesn't respond to Mike, we issue a third enforcement order and that is step three. So by the time we meet again in March, if we have not heard from Mr. Adams, we should be prepared to turn this over to DEP. Do you mean December? In December. Okay. Oh, yeah. Back in March. I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> thank you, Joyce. Yes, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Joyce, just one, one comment. Donald. I believe, for when I remember it, the, um, it was being sent to 112. Yeah. That's the, that's the address on file on the tax record on the... Um, on the assessor's map, all of that. So that is acceptable. If you have any other place to send it to, we should send copies to that also. Well, I think two places, the attorney um, office in New Ipswich. It's, well, it's a New Hampshire number. I'm not exactly sure. Um, the realtor right. who's listing and the address where Adams R&R uh, &R LLC returned the green card, and that was in Groveland. Uh, Matt. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Groveland Street in Haverhill. Right. So what we should we should use the 112 Sheldon because that's what's on all the city records. But then we can copy 
on uh, anyone else. And uh, on my letter, it, it goes, there's a copy to the, the real estate agent so that they should know. Yeah. If you have any other addresses that apply to Mr. Adams, we should send that also. And that's documentation and backup that we have tried to contact him and he's not responding. The only point I bring that up, I think as a practical matter, sending mail to 112 Shelton, no one's going to... It's not, but I would be a little bit concerned if we skip that one when, when that's oh, the address on record mm. in City Hall. Agreed. I've only heard two legal addresses. One is 1 Shelton, and 112 the other one was uh, Groveland. Those are the only two legal addresses. His, his, his realtor has no obligation, and his attorney, he can just say the attorney's fired. So, so, so. Yes, they have no obligation, Mike, but as we go forward, um, it's notice that should they sell that property in the meantime, they're well aware of that so that when we then go after the consecutive buyer, it's people are well aware of what's going on. It's, this is a legal thing and, and 112 and his Groveland address are legal mailing addresses. Right. The other two do it. It's courtesy, but, 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 but cover those two legal mailing addresses. Right. So we have a motion and a second to issue the enforcement order to the addresses that we've discussed. A step two? A step two before it goes to DEP, yes. Okay. Tim, are you with us? I am. Have you had a, a, an opportunity to take a look at the uh, violation notice and enforcement order that uh, uh, Joyce prepared? I, di I did. I took a, qu a quick look at it. Okay. And uh, if we miss um, anything now, I, maybe we could recover when he shows up. But we don't want to limit our uh, Attack. We don't want to limit our, our, ourselves if, the, if there's any omissions in it. Not that Joyce would forget anything. No, but, but please, Tim, if you have anything to add, now let's do that, please. No, I mean, th this is something. So what was done on that property is not something that the commission would issue an order conditions for. And, and they, so I, I, I think the, the uh, what, 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 do we, what does the commission want? The commission wants rest, complete restoration of, of the uh, resource areas and of the property to the condition it, that existed before the violation occurred. So I, I think it's, um, uh, we, sh we should just be crystal about that, that outcome, that, that we want complete restoration uh, of the site to the condition that, in, which, which is in keeping with the, uh, the Wetlands Protection Act. Okay. I, hope, I, I hope the motion includes a $300 fine for the initial violation and uh, notification that if he doesn't show up at a meeting that that $300 per day will, will be imposed. Um, if we don't tell him, DEP cannot enforce that. So now let's back up for one second and, and Ralph asked this question the other day. Mike, we, at last month's meeting, we asked to send another notice with a $300 fine at that time to Mr. Adams did that get done? Oh, okay, sorry, I missed. I missed that. Well, you can do that. But well, now it's a mute point. Not. That was last month's notice of violation. This now is the enforcement order, which carries more weight than the notice of violation. So let's just skip to this one. Nevertheless, he, the the. Uh, Mr. Adams needs to know our expectations completely. Uh, it's not a request to attend the meeting, is it? It's a. It's a. No, it, it's it a, is. It is that they are required, required to, to appear, attend. and they need to appear at the conservation commission meeting on Wednesday, December seventh. The language is significant. Strike one, two, and three. Yes, but what I don't see in the letter is what Tim just mentioned, namely that we should be crystal clear that we're looking for complete restoration of the site to the previous condition. I don't see that language in this letter. It's not in the letter, Ralph. It's in the actual enforcement order on um, page two in item C. There are three factors there that says um, 
property owner and then they should cease and desist all activity. Second yeah. item that's checked is resource area alterations resulting from said activity shall yeah. be corrected and the resource area returned to its original condition. I see And that. the restoration plan needs to be filed by January 1st. Um, as noted previously from Tim and um, DEP yesterday, we need to give them a window of time to prepare that restoration plan. Okay, I see that. Thank you. Okay. And our requests need to be crystal clear. We make the request and hurry up and wait. And well done, folks. Well mo done. Motion seconded. We have a second. That Here. was the second. All in favor, Commissioner Baker? Aye. Commissioner Christian? Aye. Commissioner Donnelly? Aye. Commissioner Aye. Helene? Aye. Commissioner Jacobs? Aye. Motion passes. Madam Chair, can I, um, can we back up to ride more one minute again, even though they're not here? Part of issuing the order um, of enforcement that went out previously for them, it was signed as an immediate condition, immediate order, I'll get that right one of these days, um, by Mr. O'Hara, and that has to be ratified at our next meeting, which this is our next meeting. So I motion that we approve the issuance of the enforcement order um, that was issued on October 17th to 291 Westminster Street, LLC. No, uh, no. to ride more. Ride more. Oh, not, not ride more. So I'm sorry. Okay. It, it's the 291 um, Westminster Street that we issued the enforcement order to. And I think I did say ride more when I said we were going to okay. back up. But okay. it's okay. 291 that needs to be ratified. Oh, didn't we just do that? Yeah, I'm confused, Joyce. June 1991 Westminster Street, motion and second to re reissue enforcement order requiring the, they contact Mike O'Hara within 10 days and appear before the December meeting, $600 fine. We're looking for a signature on a form. No, but we have to ratify the first order, enforcement, enforcement. order that went out. Right. So we're talking about issuing another one. We have to validate the first one. As, as You're spot on, Joyce. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we so need to vote on the first one. We need to sign. No, we just need, to, just need to be voted on for the record. Mike already signed it. We just need okay. to approve it in the meeting. Second. Um, I'll call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Christian. Aye. Commissioner Donnelly? Aye. Commissioner Helene? Aye. Commissioner Jacobs? Aye. Motion passes. Madam Chair, thank you. I didn't want to skip that step. So. No, this is excellent. I, uh, thank you. Okay, this is excellent. And um, on that note, I want to thank everyone for their service to the public. Yes. Could, oh, I'm, I just could we jump a, to Attorney Barrett? I just have a very quick note. What does well, he's here. Attorney Barrett want to say for something For a reason. Else? I, I mean, I, I Are you just hanging out? I wanted to check with Mike about whether he wanted to take the original order of condition and uh, okay. so you provide can, it. Okay. Well, you can just talk to him afterwards. Yeah. What, I, what I was going to say is um, I wanted to let you all know that on um, Monday at 11 o'clock at Mirror Lake, we're going to have a celebration of the completion of the Fitchburg Trails signage wayfinding project. Um, we put in seven kiosks and 55 wayfinding posts on six different trail networks in the city, and we're going to have a brief celebration. And any of you who are available, please come. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. And thank you for the work you did, uh, Welcome. Ralph. This is. It was, not, I, it was a lot of people, but. Yeah. No, I, I'd like to thank everyone for the work that they do and um, their uh, commitment to public service, which is really um, exceptional, in my opinion. Commissioner Donnelly. Nice job. Um, I got uh, three questions. Well, uh, 
with regard to scheduling uh, uh, applicants of people here before hearing, <coughs> excuse me, um, is it possible to have new hearings ahead, excuse me, continuances ahead of new hearings? <coughs> I'm wondering if, if someone has been here and they have a continuance, can that trump a new hearing? Um, do, they, do you schedule them as they come in, Mike? Uh, as they come in, in first come, first serve? But the continuance obviously is ahead of a new hearing. I think for both boards, I've tried to do the continuances first. Okay, fine. And then um, how about this? In-person hearing ahead of remote attendance. If a person is in the room as opposed to remotely online, could we address there might, be, there might be tough to anticipate the order depending on at the la like Bill um, Hannigan tells me this afternoon that he has to do it remote rather than he would rather be here in person. Sometimes people don't know until last minute that it would be remote. But if, if you want to shuffle the order of items on the agenda saying. based on who's physically here, you're we don't we don't time our we, we have them in, in order but we don't time we don't put a time on them so i don't Reason. think we have to fight that so you're suggesting that i mean this i think this is at the discretion of the chair that if someone's in person we take them first versus people who are remote that's all uh, okay i i just it's, it's a discussion and then lastly um <clears throat> i would ask that you please remind me of that in a, <laughs> If that's the case, just no a quick reminder. No okay. But. Mike, if I, if I could uh, mention this, uh, is, um, I e emailed Mike earlier to ask him if, when he, he thought we might be reached, and he told me about seven. But I didn't get there at six o'clock. I got there at seven. So I appreciate what you're suggesting because you know people are present and everything. Um, it's kind of hard to gauge, you know, where you're going to fit in. You don't want to be late and everything. But in a way, it's kind of like court. I mean, you know, if the judge, uh, you guys, determine that, okay, we've got everybody present for that hearing, we can go ahead, it gets to leave it up to your discretion, you know. Did you feel like you were in court today? <laughs> and, and then, and then. All, all, I, all I got was that there. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. And, and then lastly, um, yes. anybody here that would, anybody here that would like to address the council on a Tuesday evening, share with me your interest. Um, I, I, would, I, I want to do that over the course of a month or two, address the council with regard to Conservation Commission, the Wetlands Protection Act, how about that? Um, inform them of what it is we do, our role, and how it helps the city of Fitchburg, and, um, and we'll see where that gets us. I, I would like to be a part of that, and I want to caution the commission that we can't have a quorum at a city council meeting. Um, but other than that, I would be happy to attend that. My plan is individuals addressing them yep. so that they can grasp what we have to say and not be overwhelmed. And on that, to that note, I would like us to possibly uh, come up with a way of promoting the restoration, the work that Dr. Lebo did, so that we can let everybody know that this is part of the expectation now. I've mentioned it to other other people. Yeah. But I like. I think it should be on the website. Yeah. But you know, with this due is respect, what we. I don't think it's the same situation I, as uh, yes, well, yes. the one we were. Yes, of course, uh, but I wanted to make the point yeah. that we have a new standards been set for restoration on a river that's protected. Madam Chair, I have one more yes. point, if I can. Happens to be a bit um, timely tonight in more ways than one. When we were at DEP yesterday, um, she stressed the fact that we need to keep a timeline of all of our projects. When did the notice of intent come in? When did we issue the order of conditions? When did we first find out about the violation? When did we send the first violation notice? I mean, the whole thing. MACC has a, a form on their website that you can just go in and, and pull that off and for each 
um, project that we have in front of us, then we just keep track of the timeline of when things are happening. If everything's going along fine, there's not going to be a lot of entries in that log per each job. However, um, we need some information to be able to do that. So I would like to recommend that, and, and I don't know if somebody's already getting this or doing this, but we need to get copies, Mike, of, of things that come out of your office, whether it be the order of conditions, whether it be the violation notice that went out, whether it be the enforcement notice or order that went out, so that it can be logged into this timeline so that should we have to submit something to DEP later on down the road, that is all logged in and we have that. Well, that, was, you mentioned you came across a form on MACC's yep. website. Just shoot it over to me. I mean, and we can keep that in, you know, in every file as is, to when is, it, is that something you want to undertake or do you want us to well, do it because we possibly can? Well, we already have a spreadsheet showing not when the OOC was filed, but when it was issued when it expires, you know, in other um, you know, notes about it, when a um, certificate of compliance was issued. Mm -hmm. That's just a simple spreadsheet file. Right, but so Mia was, uh, she was very explicit about you have to keep detailed records. Um, and, and so that we know that things are happening, I, you know, maybe, I, you know, I will do some of that. We can each take a turn and somebody can say, I'll monitor this project or however we agree that we should be doing that. Or you can do it and report back to us. Maybe one of the other things that this may help with is orders of condition that don't go out because we would say we voted on this last month and whoever's taking on that project is not getting the paperwork back just an option to discuss. Oh, why, why don't you stop in and you can look at the files that we have and, and see how that could kind of fit in, you know, what information you would need from the files in order to fill in that. We had a discussion about having our own file. So mm -hmm. rather than the file just be limited to uh, the planning office, that that we would have our own file and we could follow any particular project. Frankly, if, if I, I could take it as a pet project and file this particular pro follow this particular project if I had a home file. Um, tonight, Could you received you something. I'm not sure where it was. You received something tonight. It was a, it was, I think it was a, a, a Word document, but it was up there. Um, I guess I could see it, but not when they only show two or three items and they don't show, and 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 no time to. No time to absorb it at all. Just see it up there, bang. How can you get any critical thought over it? I know you got it just yesterday or whatever. Um, she put it together today. Oh, this afternoon. Um, this, yeah. Um, it, it doesn't cut it. Well, if that's, if that's the way it's going to go, they're going to have to, I don't know, wait 30 days or whatever. I don't know. But uh, timely, yeah, but in hand, uh, because you can't read the document up there and you can't really offer critical comment on when you see a portion of a plan, how about that? A, a, a portion of a plan is in, is difficult. I would like to suggest <clears throat> what I have seen from Joy, she has the passion and certainly the skills. Could she be the person at least keeping the chronological order so we know when, you know, at a, she has it, you know, in meeting with her, she's got it at her fingertips. Uh, if she was willing to do that, at least let her take it the chronological events as they go. And I'm willing to do that, but if other, you know, I mean, if other commissioners want to get involved in that process and there's, I'm like, I'm interested in this project, so I want to keep that and I'm going to keep the timeline on that project, that's, that's, I'm welcome, you know, to do that too. So I just want to be a little bit more proactive so that we're prepared for what might come down the road and because Mia that we, McDonald that we met with yesterday just stressed it over and over and over and over and over again. The documentation, the timeline, um, you know, if you want our help with some of this stuff or even if you're doing it on your own, if we submit that to um, our own attorney, we have to be able to say to him, here's what we did. Mm -hmm. This, 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 this. 
we went out to visit the site again and, and all of that. And so we need to just formalize that process a little more. But we, if it's all going through Mike, so we, all, we need it from Mike. Mm -hmm. That's, we, we need it in order for us to be able to perform. Just for thought. I think, <laughs> I think this is excellent, Joyce, and I fully support that you want to you want to start this process. And um, if there's somebody, absolutely, exactly what you said. Thank you. So can we just uh, so I'll this work is like with, a whole, with Mike you know. and start. We'll start to backtrack the the timeline on Sheldon Road, Mike, 46 Sheldon Road so that if we do get ready to turn that over to DEP, we will have all that information mm -hmm. compiled. And then we will start to document um, both 291 Westminster Street that has an enforcement order and Ridemore's coming in with a notice of intent, but that's a major violation. We should document all of that too and be prepared for where that goes. And in terms of projecting, we anticipate next meeting that will be strike three against <coughs> uh, Shall we? Yeah. given the enforcement mm -hmm. notice, another notice that's gonna go out, no show on 10 days from now, a no show. We'll have a special meeting to meet them, yes? Yeah. Could, yes. Right. Well, I'm, I'm just, that, give them 10 days, not 30. Right. Because the next time we meet, that will be strike three, yeah. and we will have uh, a, a, a track record or a paper trail and we're going to dump it on DEP. Well, excuse me, at the at the commission's uh, uh, behest, we'll we'll dump it on uh, DEP, and and see if we can get some result. They're going to dump it back to us, just to let you know. It's completely reasonable. Mary or Tim, any comments on um, documentation and record keeping? I think we lost them. Mary, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I, obviously, the more documentation we have, the better. Um, it's so tough with all of us, like keeping it succinct, keeping it all in line. So, I mean, and then, you know, abiding with the open meeting laws as well. So I am just thinking like of ways to do it, but makes perfect sense that we need it to get done. So I appreciate you for sure stepping up and your communication has been fantastic. and. I don't want to dump more on you than you're willing to take on, but obviously you're doing a wonderful job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and I would agree that, that the documentation is, is critical, but more than that, it sounds like Joyce has identified a, a way to uh, keep that information in a very succinct way, which will uh, uh, make a nice package, uh, enforcement package, if we do have to turn it over to DEP. Okay, on that note, can we uh, have a motion and a second to adjourn the regular meeting of the November, November 2nd, 2022 Fitchburg Conservation Commission? Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, Commissioner Baker? Aye. Commissioner Christian? Aye. Commissioner Donnelly? Aye. Commissioner Helene? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Jacobs? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Good, good night.